Hi everyone, it's Chet here from WebsiteWizard.tv. In this video, I'm going to show you how to build a profitable blog, and you're not going to find any other tutorial like this because in this video, I'm going to show you how you can make a ton of money from your blog. So, we're not just building any blog, we're building a money making blog. Um, we're going to be using a beautiful theme which I've personally created myself for you guys, and you're going to love it. It's sleek, beautiful, and perfect for blogging. Plus, it's responsive, which means your blog will display perfectly on any screen size, whether it's a mobile, tablet, or a desktop. I'm also going to show you how to do SEO for your blog, so you can start showing up in Google and get in search engine traffic. So if you're looking to create an awesome blog online and learn how to make money from your blog, then this video is perfect for you. I'm going to cover everything step by step from start to finish, so it doesn't matter if you're a complete beginner, you've got no experience, all you need to do is follow along with me in a video, apply the steps and you have your blog up in no time. So how much money can you make from these blogs? Well I've made around $25,000 in just over a year from one blog alone so you can make great money from these blogs and I'm going to talk about this in more detail in just a moment. Don't forget to subscribe for more awesome content like this and for all of you new subscribers let me know who've subscribed by leaving a comment below the video saying I subscribed and I'll reply to each and every one of you so this right here is the blog we're going to be building in this tutorial and so this blog is going to be perfect for you if you're a business owner an entrepreneur or you're just looking to get a blog up online so I'm going to show you how you can collect emails and send out newsletters as this is vital for blogging and what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how you can do this completely free. And another thing about this is we've got our free logo kit right here. So this logo you're seeing right here is part of our free logo kit that we give away on our website at websitewizard.tv. So if you want to grab that, then you can grab that for free and you can customize that with your own text. So you don't have to spend hundreds of dollars on your logo for your blog. So as you can see on this blog, we're going to create an about me page or about us. We're going to have a cookbook page, which is basically going to be a landing page, which is a page that allows your website visitors to opt in to your newsletter in exchange for something that you're giving away for free. In this case, it's going to be a little mini cookbook. Here we've got recipes, so this is the categories for the site, and obviously for your blog, you can put whatever categories you want. Then we've got the Contact Us page here, which is going to have a contact form here, so people can automatically enter their details here, and this message will automatically get sent directly to your email. And then you've also got the option to put an address, telephone number, an email address, and even some social links if you like, but that's all optional. So if you head back to the home page, what we can do right here is we've got this banner images and the great thing about this is we can actually upload multiple banner images here so each time someone visits a different page on your blog this image will change you and that's awesome it looks dynamic it makes this just spices things up a bit on your blog so each time you your website visitors are going to different pages your blog will show a different image up here which is awesome and this is optional you don't have to have this but it looks really really cool so we're going to have our social links our opt-in forms so you can collect emails and start sending out newsletters to your subscribers we're going to categorize all of our blog posts here and then we're going to have some recent posts down the side recent comments so you can have engagement on your blog and then the search box and i'm also going to show you how to add some ads to your blog so you can start making money from your blog now you're probably thinking you can't do this or you're having doubts but trust me I started off exactly where you are a few years ago as a complete beginner and I literally had no one to help me along the way so if I could do it so can you and plus you got me to guide you through everything step by step and you can always drop me a comment below the video anytime you get stuck or you've got a question and I'll be sure to get back to you. And if you need some motivation, here's a quote I heard a few months back. And the quote is, if you do the same thing every day, you can't expect to change. And that's so true. I mean, if we want to change something in our life or we want to move on to the next level, we have to take on these challenges. And when we do so, we'll learn something new. Whereas if we just shy away from something that looks challenging, then essentially we won't learn anything and we'll be at the same level we are right now. So definitely take on this challenge, follow me in the video, and you're definitely going to learn a lot and it's going to be definitely worth it. Now I've been building websites and blogs for a long time now so if you have any questions just drop me a comment below the video and I'll get back to you. This tutorial is going to be a few hours long so make sure you favorite the video so you've got it saved for later. Let's dive straight in. 
So before we begin, I just want to show you one of my accounts here because we're going to be monetizing our blog with AdSense. So I want to show you my AdSense account so you can see exactly how much money you can actually make from these blogs. And that's the thing, a lot of these videos will tell you how much money you can make, but they never show you the proof. So I'm going to show you my account so you can see for yourself. So I'm over at Google here, so I'm just going to log into my AdSense account. So I'm going to search for AdSense, click on the link to AdSense, and then I'm going to log in right here and I'm just going to pause the video while I log in. Now I'm going to block out a lot of the information here to protect my account because as part of the terms of service of AdSense we're not actually allowed to show our stats so I'm just going to cover up a lot of the information here and just show you how much I've earned from one of my blogs. So as you can see right here, this blog has made me £17,000, which is about $25,000. So this site's just roughly over a year old now. So I've made roughly £17,000 or $25,000 in just over a year. Now the thing to keep in mind with AdSense is that this is money you make whether you're sleeping, working, on vacation. This is completely automated income. So I receive this money automatically every month straight into my bank account. Just by displaying the ads on my blog. So when people interact with those ads on my blog, I get paid the total amount at the end of each month. So this is a good chunk of money this blog has made me. And while it may not be a life-changing amount, you've got to keep in mind that this is 100% passive income. So the great thing about this is there's no shipping. It's not You're not selling any products. So there's no shipping. There's no payment processing. There's no returns, no customer queries, customer complaints. This is income that you make passive just by displaying the ads on your blog and it's not just about the passive income the other great thing is when you've got a blog like this popular blog the other opportunities come your way for example I was contacted by a company a few months back that wanted to buy this particular site for 15k but I just want to mention that because it's not just about the income you can make it's also other opportunities that come your way you get contacted by companies that want to buy advertising space on your website directly you also get companies contacting you that want to buy your blog so you get a lot more opportunities coming your way as well. Now some of you may think this is a lot of money right here that this blog's made but I can tell you there are blogs out there that are making as much as 300k a month from these AdSense ads alone and that sounds like a huge amount but what you've got to keep in mind is when a blog or website becomes super popular you can make a lot of money from these uh, blogs. Now I'm not saying that if you follow this tutorial you're going to make this much money you may make more you may make less. What I am going to do though in this tutorial is I'm going to show you you the, the process, the exact step-by-step -step process of setting up a blog and monetizing it in the exact same way as basically this site, my blog, and also other huge authority blogs. So it's just a simple case of putting AdSense on your site and you can get paid for those ads automatically. So if that's something that appeals to you, then definitely follow along with me in the video, apply the steps, and you're going to have your blog up and then you can also apply to have these ads placed on your site so you can get paid each month as well. Now the amount of money you make depends on the traffic of your site so you obviously need to still work on getting more traffic to your site and once you're getting a good amount of traffic to your blog then you can make good money from the blog from just from the ads on the site. So if you're ready to get started let's get to it. So before we begin I just want to quickly cover some basics here. Now to set up our blog we we'll need three things. We need a domain name, web hosting and WordPress. We're going to be building our blog with WordPress, so you don't need to write a single line of code. WordPress is 100% free software and it powers around 25% of the websites and blogs online and it's used by huge organizations and celebrities such as LinkedIn, TechCrunch, Katy Perry and Kim Kardashian. Now the domain name is just your website name, so our website is websitewizard.tv, so that's my domain name right there, and the hosting is where we will store our website files so that our blog can be seen online. Now the domain name and the web hosting are the only two costs we have here for setting up our blog, and we can grab these for as little as $10 a month, and I'm going to show you a coupon code to use so you can get 30% off. I'm also going to show you how to build the blog yourself from start to finish in this tutorial so you don't need to pay a web developer thousands of dollars to build your blog for you. So let's get started. 
So we're over at HostGator here and I've been with these guys for over seven years now and they're perfect for beginners and the great thing about HostGator is they've got 24 hour support which is free so you can either use their toll free contact telephone number or you can use their live chat here so it doesn't matter what time of the day it is if you're having some kind of an issue with your blog or website all you need to do is call their free contact telephone number or you can just click live chat here and you can talk to someone directly online and this is 24 hours and free so this is awesome so the first thing you want to do is click on get started now and if you scroll down here you can see there's three plans to choose from we've got the hatchling plan the baby plan and the business plan now you don't need this business plan so don't worry about that one so we just need to choose between the hatchling plan and the baby plan now the only difference between these two is that with this hatchling plan you can only host a single domain so that basically just means you can only have one blog under this one package whereas with this baby plan here you can host unlimited domains which basically means you can have as many blogs as you want under this one package and you only pay the one price here so if you're only going to have one blog then grab the hatchling plan but if you're going to have more than one blog then grab the baby plan here because you just pay the one price here and you can have as many blogs as you like here. In this tutorial, we're going to be using the hatchling plan. So under the hatchling plan here, go ahead and click on sign up now. And what I'll do is I'll leave a link to this correct hosting package in the video description. So the first thing we need to do here is choose our domain name. And this is basically going to be our blog name or website name. So what you want to do, there's two tabs here. You've got this register a new domain tab or this I already own this domain tab so if you already purchased your blog name or your domain name elsewhere then you would simply click on I already own this domain and enter your blog name here so if you already bought the domain name pinkjackets.com then you would click I already own this domain type pinkjackets.com and that's it now in this tutorial we're going to be purchasing our domain name and our web hosting so we need to click on register a new domain so click register a new domain and then enter the domain name that you want here. So whatever you want your blog to be called. So enter what you want right here. I'm going to try my awesome website or blog. Let's try blog. My awesome blog. And then on the right here, you can choose the domain extension. Uh, you can go for the .com. So select the .com. You can see right here, my awesome blog.com is unavailable so someone's already purchased that domain name but what it does here is it gives us a number of alternative domain extensions for that same website name we chose here or blog name in this case so as you can see my awesome blog.com is taken that's unavailable so someone's already purchased that domain name but we can see the ones that are available down below here so as an alternative you might want to go for my awesome blog.net or my awesome blog dot me or org or whatever so what you can do is you can choose one of the ones that are available or if you do want the dot com then all you need to do is try different domain names up here until you find a dot com that is available in this case I'm just going to choose my awesome blog dot net as that's available so I want to select that one so we can move on to the next step so I've chosen the blog name my awesome blog dot net and that's been added right here so now I'm going to scroll down to the next step and they've got this domain privacy protection here which is actually adding extra costs so that's costing an extra $13 a year and this is an extra add-on so you can uncheck this but what that does is when you purchase a domain name it associates your details with the domain name so if you don't want that to be the case then you can add on this domain privacy but that's adding an extra $13 a year so I'm going to keep that unchecked in this tutorial because that's just an extra add-on that we don't necessarily need so I'm going to keep that unchecked and then scroll down to the next step so in the next step we need to choose our hosting plan right here so this is the hatchling plan which we already selected in the previous step so you can leave that as it is then we've got the bidding cycle right here so at the moment by default it's set to pay for 36 months in advance now if you hit the drop down you can choose whether you want to pay month on month or every three months or every six months or every 12 months 
24 months or 36 months. Now, if you're a complete beginner, I definitely recommend you go for the one month here so that you're not tied into anything long term. So you can just pay month on month. So select one month here as the bidding cycle and then in the next step choose a username and a security pin and obviously you want to make sure you don't forget these so note them down or just be sure to remember those. So enter your username and security pin and scroll down to the next step. So what you want to do now is you want to enter your billing information. So you can choose on the right here, you can choose whether you want to pay by PayPal or credit card. So select whichever one you want here. And if you select credit card, then enter your payment details right here. And then on the left here, just enter your personal details right here. And make sure you're entering valid details here. Because once we sign up, HostGator is going to send us a welcome email with all of our login and access details for our hosting account. So make sure you enter your details correctly here. Then scroll down to the next step. So right now we've got some additional services and they've actually added some of these on by default. Now all of these are just extras that we don't actually need. And they're just adding extra costs right here as you can see. So go ahead and uncheck these as we don't need any of these. And then scroll down to the next step. Now, as you can see, they've got a coupon code applied here by default. So the amount due is 2390. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a different coupon code, which will give you an even bigger discount. So what you want to do is remove this coupon here and instead type flower power. And that's with no spaces and then click validate. And as you can see, the total due has dropped all the way down to 1595. Now, for some reason, when we change the coupon code here, as you can see, the add on, it's added something extra on again. So when you change the coupon code here to flower power and click validate and the price has dropped, you also want to scroll back up. So you want to scroll back up to the top and be sure to uncheck these add ons, which they've added back on for some strange reason. So uncheck all of these extra add ons, scroll back to the top and make sure that this domain privacy protection is unchecked so all the extras here are unchecked scroll back down and you can see right here that the amount due has dropped down to 1296 now the flower power coupon is the best coupon to use when paying monthly but if you're paying for six months in advance or yearly for example then you can use a different coupon here to get a bigger discount so the coupon code to use instead would be easy peasy so that's easy peasy Again, we have no spaces and then click validate. But because in this case we're paying monthly, then the flower power coupon will give us the bigger discount. So type flower power, no spaces and click validate. And there we go. And what I'll do is I'll leave the details for these coupons below the video. So now that we're done, you just need to scroll down to the bottom, click to agree to the terms and click check out now. So once you click check out now and you complete the payment, what HostGator will do is they'll send us a welcome email. And in that welcome email, it will contain all of our login details so that we can log into our hosting account and start setting up our blog. So go ahead and click check out now. So once you receive the welcome email from HostGator, it's going to look like this right here. So make sure you don't delete this email because it contains all of your important login information for your hosting account. So all you need to do here is you need to take note of three things. Your control panel will link here your username and your password. So what you want to do is click on this control panel link here to open that in the web browser and then you want to use your username here and your password to log in. So go ahead and click on this control panel link to open that in the web browser and use these details to log in. So after clicking the control panel link in your welcome email, you'll be on this page right here. So you just want to use your username and your password in that welcome email to log in. So go ahead and do that now and I'll pause the video while I log in. So we're now inside control panel and this is sometimes referred to as cPanel as well. And you're going to see a lot of different things here, but don't get overwhelmed because we're not going to use hardly any of these anyway. The only thing you need to do is scroll down to software and services. As you can see right here. And then you just want to click on quick install. And if we scroll down and if you look on the left, you can see popular installs. So go ahead and click on WordPress. And then click on this install WordPress. You can see this install WordPress for free. So click on install WordPress. 
And so what we're going to do now is just select your domain name that you chose for your blog from this drop down. So if you chose your domain name to be pinkjackets.com then you select the pinkjackets.com from here and then leave this part blank and then for the admin email you want to in enter your email address here and make sure you're entering a correct email address and make sure it's an email that you have access to because the email you put here is going to receive the login details for your blog so make sure you enter that correctly so I'm going to enter my email here and then on the right here for blog title you can enter a title for your blog so if your blog was pinkjackets.com then you can enter pink jackets here I'm gonna be creating a blog based around different recipes so I'm going to put this as delicious dishes and you can actually change the blog title later on anyway so don't worry if you change your mind you can change that later on so we want to enter an admin user and this is basically the username that we're going to use to log into our blog so I'm going to enter that here so enter your chosen username you want here and then on the right you can put your name here and then you can also you need to put a last name as well you can just put admin if you like and then you can just click on install WordPress so if you look at the top here you can see your install is complete so that's completed our installation of WordPress on our web hosting so if you click the drop down here next to view credentials you can see we've got some information right here so we've got this admin area so this link right here is what you use to log in to your blog so anytime you want to log into your blog you visit this link right here then the username here is the username you chose in the previous step and then we've been given a password for this username so make sure you note down all of this information here onto your computer so you don't lose it so I'm gonna copy these down onto a notepad file so I've got it backed up so I'm gonna do that now so I'm going to copy the password here and then I'm going to click this link to open that in the web browser so go ahead and do the same so we're now on the login page for our blog now if you don't see this login page right here and instead you're seeing an error message that's perfectly fine don't panic all it means is the new domain name that you just registered is still propagating and propagating just basically means the domain name still being set up so that should take a couple of hours or it could take slightly longer so if you are seeing an error message here after visiting that link don't panic wait a few hours if it still doesn't work and you're still getting that error message just give it up to 24 hours but it should be sooner than that and then finally once the domain names finished propagating you'll be seeing this login page right here so you can use your username and password from the previous step to log in so I'm going to do that right now So here we are, we've now logged in to the back end of our blog. So before we get started, I'm just going to quickly clean out some of the unnecessary things that have been installed by default. So what you want to do is hover over plugins here and click on installed plugins. And then you want to select all of these plugins here so what you can do is you can select these individually to select those but because we want to select all of them you can just click this top one right here next to plugin click that checkbox and that will automatically select all of the plugins so once you've done that you want to hit the drop down and choose deactivate and then click apply so now that we've deactivated all of these plugins we can go ahead and delete them so again select all the plugins here you can select those individually or you can just click the checkbox right at the top here next to plugin that will automatically select these plugins now hit the drop down and this time click delete and then click apply and then click yes to confirm the deletion and we've now deleted all of these unnecessary plugins and when we create our blog I'm going to show you some of the top plugins to use to make our blog awesome so now that we've cleaned out the plugins we want to also hover over posts and click on all posts and you want to select this hello world post and then click trash and this is just a sample post that WordPress creates when we installed it so now come on over to pages hover over pages and click on all pages select this sample page here and then click trash 
So now we've cleaned out all of the unnecessary things in our WordPress dashboard. So I just want to briefly go over what some of the things here do. So if you hover over posts here, this is where we can create blog posts. So we can click add new to add a new blog post. We can click categories to create some categories for our blog posts. And if you click all posts, you can see all of the posts that you have created for your blog. Then media here, this is where we can add media to our website. So we can add Word documents, images, videos, etc. And if you click add new, you'll add a new media file. If you click library, you can view the media files that you've already uploaded to your blog. So pages and posts right here are very similar. The only difference is, is that posts are used for dynamic content. So blog posts, for example, and pages are used for static content. So when you're creating your blog posts, you would use posts. When you're creating pages like an about us page, contact us page, they're static pages, meaning they don't change. The content on those pages generally doesn't change. So you use pages. So the general rule of thumb, if you're creating blog posts, then use posts. If you're creating pages like an about us page, contact us page, then use pages. And then comments here, this is where you can moderate the comments on your blog posts appearance. This is where we can install themes and then plugins is where we can install plugins. Now, themes and plugins are very much like iPhone apps and iPhone skins. So iPhone skins is something you can put on top of your iPhone to make your phone look different. So the appearance here, themes here are basically like iPhone skins. When we change the theme of our blog, it makes our blog look completely different. The layout looks completely different. So that's what WordPress themes are. They're essentially just like iPhone skins. They make our blog look completely different when we change the theme. We also have WordPress plugins, and these are kind of like iPhone apps. So iPhone ads add extra functions to our iPhone essentially. And that's essentially what plugins are with WordPress. You can add plugins to your blog to add some extra functions and extra functionality to your blog. So if you, for example, wanted a contact form on your blog, then you can just add a contact form plugin and that will allow you to have a contact form on your blog. Then users is where we can visit our profile, change our password, etc tools and settings are where we can make some general changes to our site so that's all the basics covered let's dive straight in so the first thing we want to do is hover over settings and then click on permalinks and then you want to select post name right here scroll down to the bottom and click save changes so what permalinks are is they are basically the url structure on your blog so we've chosen post name here. So what that essentially does is if we created a page or post called contact us, then the URL for that page or post would be your website or blog name followed by forward slash contact us. And that's the most SEO friendly way to have the URL structure on your blog. So this will give us a little SEO boost in the search engines so that we can get more search engine traffic. So the next thing to do is hover over users and click on all users. And then hover over your username and then click on edit. Then if you scroll down, what you can do is you can see this nickname right here. So it's a good idea to change this. And if you're not sure what to change this to, you can just call this admin or a better idea would be to make this your blog name. So if your blog name was pinkjackets.com then you can change this to pink jackets in this case this example log that I'm creating here is delicious dishes so I'm going to type delicious dishes right here and then when you've done that you want to choose this display name publicly as hit the drop down and choose delicious dishes scroll down to the bottom and click update profile so what that essentially does is this name right here this nickname is what's going to be displayed on our blog so when we create blog posts this name right here is going to be displayed as the author of the blog post so if you just wanted your name to be listed as an author you can put your personal name here and choose that so whatever you choose here is what's going to be displayed as the author of the blog post so what we want to do now is install our theme, which is basically going to give our website its appearance. So hover over appearance and click on themes. 
So right now you can see we've got three themes here installed on our blog and the current active theme is this one right here. So if I show you what our blog currently looks like with this theme, to do that you hover over the blog name at the top here and you can click visit site but that will load our site over the dashboard so we will lose this page. So what I like to do is I hover over the blog name at the top here and I will right click on visit site and open that in a new tab. So that way we've got our dashboard here in the first tab and then in the second tab we've got our blog right here. So as you can see, if you scroll down, this is basically what our blog currently looks like with this theme installed. But what we're going to do is we're going to change the theme and that's going to make it look completely different. So let's head back to the first tab. So I'm going to close that second tab so we're back in the WordPress dashboard. Now I created a theme for you guys to use. So to download, you need to download that theme. So to do that, open the tab in the web browser and go to website wizard dot tv forward slash themes so visit website wizard dot tv forward slash themes and I'll leave the link in the video description so visit that URL there and as you can see right here you can click here to download our theme and I've called this the PAL theme so click here to download the PAL theme to your computer so once that's downloaded you want to come back to the WordPress dashboard here in the first tab and we want to add that theme to our blog so to do that you go to appearance and then click on themes so I'll just do that again just in case you came out of here so hover over appearance click on themes and then click on add new and then click on upload theme right here now as you can see there's a load of different themes right here that you can choose for your blog and these are all completely free so there's a ton of free themes with WordPress which is what makes WordPress so awesome but in this case we're uploading a theme that I made for you guys so click on upload theme right here click on a choose file and then select the PAL theme child here now this is a zip file so don't unzip this you want to open the zipped format otherwise this won't work so double click on the zipped file here so that's palfemechilds.zip so once you've selected that from your computer you want to click on install now and then you want to click on activate you can see here it tells you the theme installed successfully so what you want to do now is click on activate so there we go you can see here we've installed and activated the PAL theme for our blog now this PAL theme is a child theme of the 2016 theme right here so this is a child theme and the 2016 is a parent theme. So if you're wondering what a child theme is, it's basically a way to customize an existing theme. So I created this PAL theme here, which is a child theme. So basically what this does is it will attach to the parent theme, which in this case is a 2016 theme. And it just allows you to add some extra different styling options and the various changes that you may want. So the point of that is that you need to make sure you don't delete this 2016 theme because if you delete this 2016 theme it will break your blog because this PAL theme here works by latching onto this parent theme. So that's just something to be aware of. Don't delete this 2016 theme otherwise the PAL theme here will not work properly. So now that we've installed the PAL theme, let's go ahead and take a look at what our blog now looks like. So to do that, hover over your blog name at the top and let's right click on visit site and open link in new tab. So let's go to the second tab and check out our blog. So as you can see right here, our blog looks a little bit cooler now. Obviously there's no content on this blog at the moment, so it looks a little bland right now. But as you can see, we've got a lot more nicer styling here. I added some custom Google fonts right here and made the sidebar look a lot cooler. So once we start adding some content to our blog, it's gonna look awesome. So let's head back to the first tab, which has got our WordPress dashboard. So what we want to do now is add our website logo. So let's dive into the theme settings. So to do that, hover over appearance and click on customize. Then click on site identity here. And you can see we can add our website logo. We can change our website title, our tagline, and also a site icon. So the first thing we want to do is add our website logo. So I'm going to click select logo here. 
and then what you can do is you can click this button to select that logo from your computer or you can use a drag and drop method where you literally just drag the image and drop it on this screen to upload it so I'm going to show you the drag and drop method so I'm going to reduce the browser screen size here I'm going to go into my assets folder here which contains all of the assets for this website and here's the website logo right here so I'm going to drag that over onto the screen and drop that right there and then I'll increase the browser screen size as you can see that's now finished uploading as it's got the blue check mark there so I'm going to click select in the bottom right here and as you can see you can crop the image as well so I'm going to drag the crop in the area like this and I'll just drag this up a little bit as well just to get that closer to the edges of the logo so that looks about right so now I've done I just want to click crop image in the bottom right and there you go you can see our website logo has now uploaded to our website and anytime you make any changes here in the left inside the theme settings you actually need to click save and publish before those changes will go live on your website because right here on the right this is just a preview of how your website currently looks with the changes we make on the left here in the theme settings however in order to make these changes go live on your actual site you need to click save and publish here at the top so let's click save and publish so that's it we've now got our logo live on our blog now this is one of the free customizable logos you can grab on our website at websitewizard.tv so if you want to save a few hundred dollars avoid having to pay someone to create a logo for you you can download our customizable logos and you can add your own website text here for your blog so you can grab that over on our website at websitewizard.tv so the next thing we want to do here is change the site title or in this case the blog title I already entered this in the previous step when we was inside cPanel so you should have your website title already right here but if you do want to change that you can change that right here and also we have a tagline here now this just says just another WordPress site this is some default text so get rid of that and you want to just write something brief summarizing what your blog is about so in this case I'm going to write easy elegant and yummy and as you can see we've got our site title displaying right here and then our tagline displaying right here now because we've already uploaded our logo for our blog right here we don't need the uh, title and tagline here so what we can actually do is just uncheck this right here that says display site title and tagline so go ahead and uncheck that and now you can see we've just got our logo on our blog without the title and tagline here so that looks a lot better so let's press save and publish to apply those changes to our live blog so the last thing to do here is to add a site icon here and this is a little icon that appears in the browser at the top here now one thing I forgot to mention actually with the website logo is the recommended dimensions if I click this again right here as you can see the suggested image dimensions are 240 by 240 so I get a lot of questions usually asking me what size logos people should upload to their websites or blogs and I always say that if you look at the theme it usually tells you it usually recommends some dimensions for you to use so as you can see right here it's recommending 240 by 240 now you don't necessarily have to use that my logo definitely wasn't 240 by 240 40 but that's just something to keep in mind so I'm going to close this right here so now what I want to do is add our site icon or our blog icon in this case so to do that click on select image and then as you can see right here we've got two tabs we've got a media library tab and then we've got this upload files tab so this media library tab displays all of the images and media that you've already uploaded to your blog and you can click the upload files tab on the left and this is where you can upload new files and media to your blog so we're going to be uploading a new file here to our blog so click on upload files tab then click either select files to select that file from your computer or you can drag and drop the image to the screen let's use the drag and drop image so I'm going to reduce the browser screen size here then I'm going to go inside my assets folder which contains all of the images and content for this blog and I'm going to grab the site icon right here 
and I want to drop that right here now before I do that actually I just want to point out that you can see here again the suggested image dimensions are 512 by 512 so if you do create a site icon you can be sure to use those dimensions for best results so I'm going to drag my site icon from my folder here onto the screen to upload that then I'm going to increase the browser screen size as you can see it's already uploaded now as it's got the blue check mark here so all I need to do is click on select on the bottom right here and there we go we've got our site icon and if you look at the top here you can now see our site icon is displaying in the tab right here so now that we've finished here all you need to do is click on save and publish to make sure all of those changes are applied on our live blog so now that we've done that hit the back button and another thing we can do is click on header image here so click on header image and what we can do is we can upload some header images to display on our blog so that will display right here at the top underneath our blog logo so let's add our header image so click on add new image here and then again we're inside the media library tab which is where all of our existing images that we've already uploaded are displayed so if you want to reuse an image you've already uploaded then you can just go into the media library tab and select that again in this case we're uploading a new image so we're going to click on the upload files tab here and then you can click to select the file from your computer we can drag the image to this screen I'm going to drag the image to upload it right here now I'm going to reduce the browser screen size then I'm going to go into my assets folder here and then I'm going to drag my header image right here I've got one here and now I've got a second header image so I'm going to show you how to upload multiple header images so let's just do the first one first so the header one I'm going to upload the first header image so I'm going to drop that right there and you can see it's uploading right now so wait for this to finish uploading there you go now you can see the image here so it's finished uploading let me just increase the browser screen size so now that's finished uploading in the bottom right you just want to click on select and crop right here and there you go we can crop the image now I recommend that because we're gonna upload multiple header images I recommend you keep this crop area the same size just drag it down to wherever looks best for this image but don't change the crop size and I'll show you why in a second so I'm just gonna drag this about here then I'm going to click crop image in the bottom right and there you go you can see we've got this awesome header image now displaying on our blog now what we can actually do which is really cool is we can actually upload multiple header images here and then we can click randomize header images and what happens is each time someone visits a different page on our blog this header image will alternate between the images we've uploaded here and this is really cool it just adds a dynamic element to your blog and it just makes it look really really cool so let's add a second header image right here so click on add new image and again we're inside the media library tab but we want to upload a new image so let's click on the upload files tab and let's drag the image to the screen right here so I'm going to reduce the browser screen size then I'm going to open the assets folder and I'm going to grab this header to image right here and I'm going to drag that over to the screen and drop that there to upload that so that's uploading right now once it's finished uploading you'll see the image appearing right here there we go it's finished uploading so all we need to do is in the bottom right we need to click select and crop now as I mentioned before I suggested that you don't change the cropping size here and the reason I said that is because now that we've uploaded a second banner image we want those two banner images to be the, exactly the same size so that's why I said don't change the crop size here so let's just drag this around to match the image so that looks about right for this image so I'm going to leave that like that and then I'm going to click crop image so there we go we've got our second header image right here so what we need to do now is just click on randomize upload headers so we've clicked randomize uploaded headers so what that does and we just need to click save and publish to make those changes go live on our site there we go so what that will do is each time the page is loaded the header image will change on our blog so that just looks really really cool and you can upload as many header images as you like right here and then click to randomize those and that's just gonna add a really nice dynamic element to your blog so now we've done that let's come out of here by clicking the back arrow here 
So what we can do now is click on background image to upload a background image on our blog. So click on background image here and then click on select image. So we're inside the media library tab we want to upload a new image so click on upload files here and let's drag and drop the image to this screen to upload it. So I'm going to reduce the browser screen size and I'm going to open the assets folder here on my desktop and I'm going to grab the background image which is this one right here. So I'm going to drag that over to here, drop that to upload that and wait for that to finish uploading. It's still uploading as you can see right here by the blue bar and there we go the image is appearing here which means it's finished uploading so in the bottom right click on choose image and there you go you can see we've got this cool background image now on our blog so let's click save and publish now to save and apply those changes to our live blog so let's come out of here now so click the cross here to jump out of the theme settings so we're now back to the WordPress dashboard. So let's just take a quick look at our blog to see how it looks now with our changes. So to look at our blog, hover over the blog name at the top here and you can click visit site but that will load the blog over this page right here. So in order to keep this dashboard open here, we can actually right click on visit site and open that in a new tab. And actually I'm going to close that for a second. I just want to show you how to get back to this dashboard if you do open the blog on the same page. So hover over the blog name and click visit sites. And this is what our blog currently looks like with the changes. So as you can see we've got our header images here, we've got our custom logo and we've got the background image right here. And if I just refresh the page you should see this background header image change. Let's do that again. There you go. So this means that each time someone visits a different page on your blog this header image will change and that's really cool. And you can upload as many header images as you want here. So if you want 10, upload 10 and it will display 10 different images throughout your blog when your visitors are uh, viewing various pages on your blog. So now that we're on the blog here, to jump back to the WordPress dashboard, all you need to do is hover over the blog name here and click on dashboard. And now we've jumped back into the WordPress dashboard. So the first thing we want to do is we want to create the main categories for our blog. Now you don't have to do all of these right away as you can add more categories later on when you build out your blog with more and more content. But for now you want to create a few basic categories where your blog posts will get listed under. And using categories to structure your blog content is really important, not only for search engine exposure, but also for user experience too. So I'm going to show you how to organize your blog posts into categories to make it easy for your visitors to find what they're looking for, as this will improve user experience and keeps your readers engaged with your content and on your blog longer. And this is really important for SEO. So let's go ahead and do that now. So to add our categories, hover over posts here and click on categories. So what you want to do is enter a category name here. I'm going to enter the category name appetizer as this is a food blog. And then for the slug here, you want to just enter the same thing again. What the slug is, is it's just the URL for this category. So the category name is appetizer. And then the slug here is appetizer, which basically means the category URL is going to be appetizer as well. And if you like, you can just add a brief description about the category here but I'm going to leave this blank so you don't need to do this you can if you want I'm going to click add new category and as you can see at the top here on the right we've just added the appetizer category and you can see this uncategorized category here and this is a default category that WordPress has for any blog posts which aren't listed under a particular category so if you create a blog post and you don't assign it to one of your categories you've created then it automatically gets listed under the uncategorized category so let's go ahead and create a second category. So I'm going to add another category here. I'm going to call the category name breakfast and then the slug, which is the URL is going to be breakfast. Then I'm going to click add new category. Then I'm going to add another category here. The name of the category is dessert and then the URL or the slug is dessert. Then I'm going to click add new category. And I'm going to add another category. I'm going to give it a name of snack and then a URL slug snack and then click add new category. And then I'm going to add a final category here, main course, and then the slug or URL is going to be main course as well. Then I'm going to click add new category. So what you just want to do is create a few basic categories that you can list your blog posts under. 
Now don't worry about trying to get every single category on your site right away. Just get the main ones up there first and as you build out more and more content on your blog, you can add more categories later on, that's not a problem. Now if for any reason you want to delete one of these categories, if, you've, uh, if you don't no longer want a category or whatever, you can actually just hover over the category, select that and click delete. So I'm just going to delete this snack one here to show you that. So I've deleted the snack category, so let me just quickly add that back. Then click add new category. There we go, I've added that category back. Or if you want to edit the category, if you want to call this snacks instead of snack, you can hover over that and click quick edit. And then you can change that to snacks right there. Click update category on the right here. And there you go, I've just changed that category name to snacks. So now we've got the category set up for our blog, I'm going to show you how to create posts full of valuable actionable information so that your visitors will find a ton of value from your blog and are likely to return for more. So Mashable right here is a leading blog for news and information and as you can see it's very visual, there's a lot of big images right here. So we're going to be doing the same thing on our blog and using some big images to make everything look beautiful. And if we take a look at CNN here, they use a lot of videos in their content right here. Uh, this helps to improve engagement on your blog and just adds another dimension to your content. So we'll be doing the same thing. So in our blog posts, we're going to have big catchy images and then also videos inside our blog posts. And this will help to make our blog really, really cool. So let's start creating some blog posts. So to do that, hover over posts here on the left and click add new. So as you can see at the top here, this is where we enter our blog title. And at the bottom here, this is where we enter our blog content. So I'm going to enter a title here for this blog post, which is tasty pumpkin soup. And I'm going to click down here in this area right here. And if you notice, the URL for this post becomes the same as the title and that's a great for SEO. So let's click in this area right here and you can see some formatting options right here. And if you just click this last one at the end here, that will open up more formatting options. So basically to create content in WordPress is very similar to how you would create content in Microsoft Word. So I'm just going to type this is an example paragraph. So if I hit return or enter on your keyboard, I can type a second paragraph here. This is a second paragraph. And this is a third paragraph. So what you can do is you simply type in the content here or you can paste it in here and then just use the formatting options here. So this is a bold button. So if I highlight example here and press bold, as you can see, that's now become bold. And if I want to remove that, you can highlight it again. And if you look at the um, button here, you can see it's indented, which means that's already applied here. So if we click that again, that will remove the bold from that text. So another thing here is the italic button. So if you want to make this text right here italics or italicized, you can highlight that, click this button right here. And as you can see, that's applied there. If you highlight it again, you can see the button here is indented, which means that's already applied. So if we want to remove that, just click the button again, and that's removed that. If we want to make this second paragraph here a bullet point, you can click right here and click the bullet point icon. And there we go, that's now a bullet point. If we want to remove that, you can click back here again, and you can see the button's indented, which means it's already a bullet point. So if we uncheck that, that removes the bullet point. If you want to make this a quotation, you can highlight that and click the uh, block quote button. And there you go, that's now a quote. Or if you want to remove that, highlight that and then uncheck this right here. And you can use some alignment here. So if you want to left align the text, you can highlight that, click left align or center align or right align. And if you just remove that, it will return back to the default. You can add links here or remove links so if I want to highlight example here I can highlight that and then click the link button and I can add a URL so when someone clicks on that it will link to the URL I put here so I can just put HTTP www.example.com and then click this apply here to apply that and you can see now that's a link and if I want to remove the link I can highlight that and click this remove link button right here and that will get rid of the link 
and I just missed the end here so I'll highlight that and click remove link there as well there you go so that's that so we've got some more formatting options here as you can see by default we're using paragraph text so if I want to make this second one here a heading I can highlight that hit the drop down here and choose heading one and heading one is the biggest size so if you want a smaller heading you can highlight that and make that a heading two or heading three and they get smaller the further down you go so that's a heading right here and if I want to underline something if I want to underline this right here I can highlight that click the underline button right there that's underlined if I want to change the text color I can highlight this right here hit this drop down right here and choose a different color I can choose to make that red and there you go and uh, this is to in decrease or increase the indentation so if I click right here on this paragraph here I can then click to increase indent and as you can see it's gone inwards I can click it again 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 or back 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 and this right here is an undo button which is really really helpful so if you make a change let's say I deleted this third paragraph by, by mistake then I can click the undo button right here and that returns or I can click the redo button to bring back the change so it's very similar to Microsoft Word if you've ever used Microsoft Word before then it's very very simple now the other thing you may want to do is add a media, add an image or a video or something. So if I hit return on the keyboards and I want to put an image right here, I can click add media. And I can click the upload files tab to upload a new image or I can click the media library tab to insert an image that we've already uploaded to our site already. So I'm going to click this image here just as an example. So I've selected that and I'm going to click insert into post and as you can see the image is now on this post and you can left click on it once and you can choose different alignments so I can center align the image left align right align and as you can see this is left align with text on the right that's what these dots are this one is right align the image with the text on the left so if I put this image here for example so let me add the image here so I've clicked to put the cursor here I'll click add media I'll choose this image and then click insert into post at the bottom here so the image is right here so if I want the text to be on the left and the image on the right I can left click the image once and choose this option right here so this will align the image right but then have the text on the left so if I click this you can see image is aligned right text is aligned left or if I want the image on the left and the text on the right I can click this left align button right here and if I want to increase or reduce the size of the image I can left click on it once and I can actually just hover over the bottom edge here until this diagonal arrow appears and I can drag it out to make that bigger or I can drag it inwards to make the image smaller so there we go so let me just get rid of all of that now so I'm going to click on the image once and click this cross here to remove that I'll click on this image and click the cross to remove that and then I'll just highlight all of this text and click the backspace button so back to the blog post I put the blog title here I just want to put in my blog content right here and I've got this saved in a notepad file so I'm just going to paste it right here so to do that you can right click and paste here now if you're pasting in from Microsoft Word for example then sometimes the formatting will already be applied on that so if you want to strip all of the formatting from Microsoft Word if you've copied text from Microsoft Word then you want to press this button right here which is paste as text and then what that would do let me just press the cross here it's just telling you what it's doing right here you can read that I'm going to close that so I'm going to click the cross and you can see the buttons now indented so basically what that means is whatever text we paste here it's going to strip any formatting that was previously applied to the text so I've pasted my text right here so here's the text I'm going to highlight this right here and press the bold button to make that bold and I'm going to highlight this one right here and press the bold button to make that bold and then I'm going to scroll to the top and I want to show you how to add a YouTube video right here so I'm just going to type add YouTube video here so what you can do if, if you want to upload videos to your blog you can first upload those to YouTube and then just grab the embed code from your YouTube video and paste that here so I'm gonna go to YouTube and just grab any video related to pumpkin soup so I'm over at YouTube I'm just gonna click on the first image here that comes up for pumpkin soup and then I'm going to scroll down and click on share right here 
I then click on embed and then I'm going to right click and copy this code right here then I'm going to go back to our first tab in the blog post and right here is where we want to paste that code now what happens in WordPress is when you're creating a page or a post here we work in the visual tab right here which is where we can use all of these formatting options right here and you can just basically use this to create content just the same as you would in Microsoft Word and what happens is if you click the text tab here all of that gets automatically turned into HTML code so we work in the visual tab right here however because we're going to paste in embed code we grabbed from YouTube we need to actually paste that in the text tab right here so if we go to the visual tab I'll just show you an example I can paste that right here however it won't be right it won't be showing the video because this is code so I need to do that through the text tab right here so if I just type here so I've typed here and I'm going to head on over to the text tab here and I'm going to find that text I've written there here and I'm going to right click and paste that code right there for the video then I'm going to click the visual tab and as you can see the video is displaying perfectly right here so I just want to get rid of this space here so I'm going to click here and click delete on my keyboard just to bring the text higher up so I've got my blog post I've got a video I've got my blog content right here so what we want to do now is on the right if you scroll down on the right you can see categories here so you want to select a category that this blog post is going to be listed under so this is a pumpkin soup post so I'm going to scroll down and on the right underneath categories I'm going to choose appetizer here as the category for this blog post and then we want to scroll further down on the bottom right and you can click this set featured image so this is the image that's gonna be displayed right above this blog post and I'll show you that in a second so click set featured image here and then we want to upload a new image for this blog post so currently we're inside the media library tab so click on the upload files tab so that we can upload our new image to our blog so you can click here to select that from your computer or you can drag and drop the file to the screen I'm gonna drag and drop the file so I'm gonna reduce the browser screen size here then I'm going to open the assets folder and then I'm going to go into my blog post folder and into the tasty pumpkin soup folder and here's the image I want to use right here for this blog post so I'm just going to drag that image and drop that here to upload that so that's currently uploading and there you go it's finished uploading as you can see the image is now displayed here and it's selected with the blue check mark so all we need to do is click on set featured image on the bottom right here there you go you can see our featured image right here so we've done everything now so all we need to do is scroll up to the top and click on publish here to publish this blog post on our blog so click publish and there you go so what we want to do now is we want to see this blog post on our blog so to do that you can see right here at the top it says view post so if you click that it will load that over this page but we don't want to lose this page right now so I'm going to right click on view post and open in new tab and I head on over to the second tab here and as you can see this is what our blog post currently looks like so if we scroll down we've got our blog title right here we've got this big image here which is the featured image we just created then underneath that we've got our blog content so we've got our uh, introduction here and then we've got a video right here we have got the content right here the ingredients the directions then we've got blog comments so people can comment and interact on this blog post which is awesome uh, if we scroll to the top if we go to the home page so if you click the logo here we will return to the home page for our blog and as you can see on the home page if you scroll down it shows all of our blog posts here now what it actually does is it shows the full blog post on the home page and this is fine when you just got one blog post but when you've got more than one blog post which every blog will it gets a little bit too much having the whole blog post here we don't want the whole thing displayed on the home page we just want a summary of this blog post so what we can do is if we head back to the first tab which is where we created our blog we can add a read more button so you can put the read more button wherever you like so I'm going to put it right here just underneath the video so I'm gonna click on ingredients just put to put the cursor here I'm gonna hit return and then click right here and then click this button right here which is insert read more tag 
and there you go you can see that from the little lines there so we want to update those changes so scroll up to the top and on the right click on update so now that that's finished loading we want to head back to our blog so in we've already got that open in the second tab so I'm going to go there now but if you didn't you can just hover over the blog name right click on visit site and open that in a new tab so we're now on the home page for our blog once that finished loading and if we scroll down now you can see on our home page we've got our first blog post being displayed but now as you can see we've got a continue reading button here so it's just showing a summary of the blog post and when they want to see the full blog post they can click continue reading or they can click on the blog image and that will bring them to the full blog post which you can see right here so we're now on the blog post right here. So what I want to do now is create a second blog post. So I'm going to head back to the first tab, which is our WordPress dashboard. So to create our second blog post, you can actually click right here, which is add new, or you can do it from the sidebar. So hover over posts and click add new. So what we want to do first is enter our blog post title here. So I'm going to paste that in simple spaghetti here. And then underneath right here is where we want to enter the content for this blog post. I'm going to grab that from my notepad file that I've got in my assets folder. So you can type out your content here or you can copy and paste it from Microsoft Word or from a notepad file. So I'm going to paste in the content right here. Then I'm going to highlight preparation here and click the bold button to make that bold and I'm going to do the same for the ingredients heading here I'm going to click to make that bold then I'm going to remove this and just replace that with a YouTube video so I'm going to find a YouTube video related to spaghetti so I'm going to go over to YouTube right now so I'm going to choose this one right here so I'm going to click on this video and then I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to click on share right here then I'm going to click on the embed and I'm going to copy the embed code then head back to the WordPress dashboard in the first tab so I want to paste in that embed code here now as I mentioned before we're in the visual tab now because we're pasting in code we need to click the text tab now if you want to know where to paste this code let's say we want the video right here then it will be a good idea to just type here and then when you head over to the text tab you can see that text right here so you know where to paste that code so I'm gonna remove that and then paste the embed code here then head back to the visual tab by clicking on the visual tab right here and you can see our video is displaying within our blog post right here so now that we've done that we want to choose a category for this blog post so this is a simple spaghetti post so on the right if you scroll down you can see categories here so I'm going to choose main course as the category for this blog post and if we scroll down a little further we can choose a featured image for this blog post and this is the big image that's going to be displayed above our blog post so click on set featured image uh, we want to upload a new image we're currently inside the media library tab so let's click on the upload files tab and let's upload the new image you can click select file to select from your computer or you can drag the file to the screen let's drag the file I'm going to reduce the browser screen size then I'm going to go in my assets folder and I'm going to find the blog post which is simple spaghetti right here and I'm going to grab the image for that blog post and drop that right here to upload that and there we go that's finished uploading as you can see the image is displaying right here so all I need to do in the bottom right is click set featured image and you can see that displaying right here so this blog post is finished the last thing I need to do is just add the read more tag right here so just like with the other blog post I'm gonna add that tag right here so I'm gonna create a space here click right here and then click on the insert read more tag so now that's done, I'm going to scroll up to the top and click publish on the right here to publish that blog post on our blog. So now we've done that, we want to view our blog post and you can do that by clicking on view post here. Now I'm going to open that in a new tab so I don't lose this page. Or actually I'll just do it from here so you can see. Let's just click on view post here and that's going to load that blog post on this page. So if you scroll down you can see that this is our simple spaghetti blog post. So we've got our big featured image right here at the top. Then we've got our blog content, we've got our YouTube video which is awesome which adds another dimension to our blog post because we've got 
the content, we've got a video, we've got an awesome big image, so it all looks really cool and it's really engaging as well because video helps to create more engagement on your blog posts. So there we go, so that's it. If we go to the home page of our blog, so click on the logo to go to the home page, you can now see we've created two blog posts, so we're gonna now see both of those blog posts on our home page. So we're on the home page, let's scroll down. We've got our simple spaghetti blog with the image, the content, the video, and then it's got the continue reading to which you click to see the full blog post and actually you can also click the big featured image here to go to that blog post so if you scroll down further you can see we've got our second blog post here tasty pumpkin soup we have the image the text the video and then because we put the read more tag just underneath the video we are now getting this continue reading button which if you click goes to the full blog posts so that's our second blog post let's create a third blog post so to head back to the wordpress dashboard hover over our blog name and click dashboard so I'm going to add a third and final blog post. So to do that, hover over posts and click add new. So right at the top here, you want to type in or paste in your blog title. So I'm going to do that right here. So this one's easy homemade toffee. Then down here in the bottom, you want to paste or type in the content for this blog post. So I'm going to grab that from my notepad file and paste that right here. So I'm going to right click, paste that right here. Then I'm just going to highlight the heading here, make that bold and then highlight this ingredients heading and make that bold and then I want to put a YouTube video right here so I'm gonna grab a YouTube video related to toffee so I'm gonna grab this video right here so I'm gonna click to watch that video then I'm gonna scroll down and I'm going to click on share and then embed and then right click and copy the embed code and then head back to our blog post in the first tab. So I want to paste the embed code to have that video displayed within this blog post. Now again, because we copied the embed code, because it's code, we need to paste it in the text tab. So I'm just going to type here so that it's easy for me to know where to post the code when I go to the text tab. So click on the text tab here and we've got that text right here. So I'm going to remove that and paste in the embed code there we go now I'm gonna head back to the visual tab and as you can see our video is displaying perfectly fine right here so we want to choose a category for this blog post so this is homemade toffee so if I scroll down on the right under categories I'm going to choose dessert here so I'm gonna to click to select that then I'm gonna scroll down further and set a featured image for this blog post so click set featured image and we're inside the media library tab we want to upload a new image so let's click on the upload files tab click here to upload to select the file from your computer or you can drag and drop the image to the screen I'm going to drag and drop the image so I'm going to reduce the browser screen size open the assets folder and grab the image for this blog post which is right here and I'm going to drop it to upload that so that's uploading right here you can see by the blue bar once it's finished uploading you're going to see the image appearing right here so let's just wait for that to finish uploading so there we go it's finished uploading as you can see from the image is now displaying so all you need to do is click set featured image in the bottom right here there you go we've set our featured image the last thing we want to do is insert a read more tag so if we go to the blog post I added the read more tag underneath the video so I'm going to click here to create a space click right here and then click the insert read more tag right here so there you go you can see the dashed lines here so that's inserted fine I want to now publish this blog post so scroll to the top on the right click on publish and there we go we've now published this blog post so to preview the blog post click on view post here and we can take a look at that blog post live on our blog so scroll down you can see we've got our blog heading here we've got our big featured image here we've got our content our video and more content and then we've got comments here so if anyone wants to comment they can comment on our blog post and then we can reply and that gets a lot more engagement on your blog post which is great so one thing you may want to do is you may want to disable comments on a blog post so I'm going to show you how to do that now so let's head back to the WordPress dashboard, hover over your blog name here and click on dashboard. Then hover over posts and click all posts. 
So as you can see right here, this lists all of our blog posts we've currently got published on our blog. So let's say for example, we wanted to remove the comment box on the Simple Spaghetti blog post. So to do that, hover over Simple Spaghetti here and click Quick Edits. Then on the right here, you can see this Allow Comments is checked. So all you need to do is uncheck that and click Update here. So now on this simple spaghetti blog post, there's no longer going to be a comment box. So if we hover over simple spaghetti and click view here, we can view that blog post. So let's scroll down. We're on the simple spaghetti blog post. Scroll down now and you can see that there's no longer a comment box here. All we see now is links to our other blog posts. So let's head back up and head back to the WordPress dashboard. So hover over the blog name and click on dashboard. So if you want to enable comments again on that blog post, you can hover over posts, click all posts, and then let's find the simple spaghetti post, hover over that and click quick edit. And then the allow comments is unchecked because we just unchecked that. So let's check that again and then click update so we can have the comment box back on that blog post. So if we head on over to our blog right now, I'm going to hover over the blog name, right click on visit site and open that in a new tab. So let's head back to the second tab. Uh, this is our blog right here. What you may have noticed in the sidebar right here is we've got a search box. We've got recent posts, which basically lists our recent posts. We've got recent comments. We've got archives, categories, and meta. Now you want to remove some of these meta. We don't want this displaying right here. You may or may not want archives. Basically, that lists all the blog posts created within a certain date. So if I click September 2016, it will show me all of the blog posts created in that month. And same with categories. If I click the appetizer category, it will show me all of the blog posts under that category. So we want to customize this right here. So to do that, let's head back to the WordPress dashboard in the first tab. So to go to the sidebar, you want to hover over appearance and click on widgets. And then you can see this right here, sidebar. So you've got all of these little boxes right here. So these are what we're currently seeing in the sidebar. So if you want to remove any of these, all you need to do is you can click the drop down. So the meta one, if we want to remove that, click the drop down and then click delete. And that will delete that from the sidebar. If we want to delete the archives, hit the drop down and click delete. And there's an actual quicker way of doing it. If you just left click and drag to the left and drop, that will remove that. That's a quicker way of doing it. I like to use that method. So I'm going to completely remove everything from the sidebar. So I'm going to left click, drag to the left and drop, left click, drag to the left and drop, left click, drag to the left and drop. So right now the sidebar is completely empty. So let's go ahead and take a look at that right now. So hover over the blog name, right click on visit site and open link in new tab. Head on over to the second tab here. And now if you scroll down, you can see we no longer have a sidebar on our blog. So let's just go back to the WordPress dashboard in the first tab and let's add some stuff in the sidebar. So the first thing you may want is a search box. So all of the things you see on the left here, these available widgets right here, are the things that we can drag into these areas. So if we drag things from here into the sidebar, then that will add those to the sidebar. So you may want a search box, for example. So just scroll down to search here, left click, drag it up to the top and drop that in the sidebar. And if you want, you can give it a title. So you may want to say looking for something question mark and then click save so that's going to add a head in there for the search box so i just want to show you that on our blog so hover over the blog name at the top right click on visit site and open link in new tab so let's head on over to the second tab and take a look at our blog post now so if you look in the sidebar the sidebar is now back and it's just got one thing in it it's got the search box and then we've got our heading right here looking for something that we just put so let's add some more stuff in the sidebar. So head back to the WordPress dashboard in the first tab and let's close that one. So let's drag some more stuff here. So what else would you want? Well, categories is a good thing to have. So drag the categories box and drop that inside the sidebar here. And if you hit this drop down, that will just minimize that. And also we want to list our recent comments. So left click on recent comments and drag that here, drop that there. Um, let's also add some blog posts. So we want our recent posts. So let's drag this recent post and drop that right here. So you can see we can reorder these. So if we want, for example, the search box at the bottom, 
we can actually just drag this to the bottom and drop that right there. So I would say you would want the categories first then the recent posts and then the recent comments and you can have the search box at the bottom or at the top. Let's leave that at the bottom for now. So let's now go over to our blog to see how our sidebar now looks. So in our sidebar we've now got categories, we've got recent posts, recent comments and a search box. So hover over the blog name, right click on visit site and click open in new tab. Head on over to the second tab and we can now see in the sidebar we've got our categories, we've got recent posts, we've got recent comments and we've got this search box. I'm going to actually remove this heading, I prefer it without that so I'm going to head back to the first tab and then I'm going to click on the search one here to open that up and I'm just going to remove this title and click save and now head back to the second tab, click refresh to refresh those changes and now you can see we've just got the search box without a heading. I think that looks better actually. And under recent comments, because there's no comments on this blog post, there's no comment shown here. So if I click one of our recent posts here, so let's click on the easy homepage toffee. And I'm just going to scroll to the bottom and leave a comment on this blog post. I'm just going to say this is an example comment. And then I'm going to click post comment. So you can see the comment now appears underneath this blog post. So if you scroll up to the top, you can now see in sidebar, underneath recent comments, we've now got our comment that we just left right there. So let's head back to the WordPress dashboard in the first tab. So let's now start to create some pages for our blog. So to create your pages, hover over pages here and click add new. So you may want to create an about us page. So let's create an about us page. Or if this is a personal blog, you can call this about me. I'm going to put about me here. Then I'm going to click down here in the content area and I'm going to paste in some pre-written content that I've got. So this is my content for this page. I'm just going to remove this and make this a heading two. So I'm going to highlight that and hit the drop down and select heading two. And as you can see, I've accidentally made all of this a heading too. So let's press the undo button here. And what I want to do is just make a space here. So I'll put the cursor here and hit return on the keyboard and then backspace. There we go. So we've got a space here. So this time it'll work fine. So highlight this, hit the drop down and select heading two. There you go. I'll do the same thing for the one here. Highlight this. Actually, before I do that, I'll make this space. So I'm going to hit return, then backspace. There we go. I'm going to highlight this, hit the drop down, and select heading two. And then I'm also going to add an image right here. So I'm going to remove that text. And so I'll put the cursor here. I'm going to click add media. And we want to upload a new file. Currently, we're inside the media library tab, which is displaying all of the images we've already uploaded to our website. So if you want to reuse an image, you can quickly select that here. However, we're using, we're going to upload a new image. So click on the upload files tab. Then you can click select files to select that from your computer, or you can drag and drop the image to this screen. I'm going to use a drag and drop method. So I'm going to reduce the browser screen size. Then I'm going to open the assets folder, which contains all of the assets for this blog. And then I'm going to open the pages folder here and the about me folder. And here's the image for this about me page. So I'm going to drag that over here and drop that right there to upload that. And that's currently uploading and it's finished uploading now, as you can see from the image, it's appearing. So all we need to do in the bottom right is click insert into page. There we go. Here's our image. Now I want this image to be a little bit bigger. So I'm going to left click on the image once. Then I'm going to click the pencil icon here to edit this. Then I'm going to, you can see this right here, size. It's currently on medium. I want to choose a large size. So I'm going to hit the drop down and choose large here. And then in the bottom right click update. There we go. Boom. Look at that. That's awesome. So we've got a big image here and we've got just a brief description about this blog. So now that that's done, I just want to click on publish. So scroll to the top on the right. You can click publish right here. So there we go. We've now published that page on our blog. So let's go ahead and take a look at what that looks like. So to do that, you can click on view page right here at the top. 
And there we go, here's our page. So if you scroll down here, we've got this about me, which is the heading for this page. Then we've got the large image that we just uploaded, which looks really cool. Then we've got two headings with some content below right here. So let's head back to the WordPress dashboard. So to do that, hover over the blog name at the top here and click on dashboard. So let's go ahead now and create a contact us page for our blog. So to do that, hover over pages and click add new. So for the heading for this page, you can type contact us or contact me. I'm going to write contact me for this example blog. Then I'm just gonna paste some sample content down here. So I've said email me at example at email.com. Then I've put a telephone number and a physical address. Now you don't have to put a physical address or telephone number, you can put whatever you want here. Um, but this is just an example, I'm just showing you what you can do here. So I want to make this part bold, so I'm going to highlight this and click the bold button. And I'll do the same here, call me on and I'm going to highlight that, click the bold button. Then again here, highlight that, click the bold button. So what we want to do now on this page is we also want to add a contact form to this page. And to do that, we're going to need to use a contact form plugin. And this is where the real beauty of WordPress comes through. Because anytime you want to add a new function to your blog or website, all you need to do is find a WordPress plugin. And there are hundreds of free plugins on WordPress. And you can just install a plugin on your blog. And then that adds extra functions. So we want a contact form on this page. So we're going to install a contact form plugin. So to do that, let's just quickly publish this page. So on the right at the top, I'm going to click publish to publish this page on our blog. So we've now published this page. We want to grab a contact form plugin. So to do that, hover over plugins and click add new. Now in the search plugins box at the top here, you want to type contact form 7 and then hit enter on your keyboard and there you can see here it is contact form 7 and it's had 1 million downloads as you can see right here so it's a really popular plug in this one and I've been using this for years on many different websites and blogs and so what I'll do is I'll leave the details for all the plugins I use in this tutorial I'll leave that in the video description so here's the contact form 7 plugin here so all you need to do is click install now and now that's finished installing, we want to click activate to activate that plugin. So we're now on the contact form page here. So we just need to click settings right here to go to the settings. Now, if for whatever reason you accidentally navigated away from that page, then you can find it down here on the left. So you just hover over contact and click on contact forms and you'll come back to this page right here. So this is it, all we need to do, this is a short code. We just literally just copy this short code right here and paste this on our contact us page and that will add a contact form to our page. But I just wanna quickly show you something in the settings first. So you wanna hover over contact form one and click on edit. So here's the contact form. What you want to do is click on mail here. And I just wanna show you this now when someone completes this contact form, this email right here is going to receive the email sent through your contact form. So if, for example, you wanted to have a different email receiving those messages sent through the contact form, then all you need to do is change the email right here. And if you do make any changes here, just remember you need to click save right here on the right to save those changes. In our case, the email's fine, so I don't want to change that. So all you need to do is copy the short code for this form. And again, it's displayed right up here at the top here so if you click on this right click and copy to copy that short code and now we're going to head back to our contact page and add this contact form so to head back to our contact page hover over pages and click all pages and you can see our contact me page right here so hover over that and click edit and so here we go so all we need to do is click down the furthest part here hit return on the keyboard and you want to paste that code right here now you may be wondering how comes when we was using YouTube embed code why did we have to go to the text tab and paste that 
when that was code. Where in this case, we're pasting a short code and we're doing it in the visual tab. Well, the reason is, is because short codes are something that's actually built into WordPress. So that's why we can paste a short code here and that's perfectly fine. Whereas when you're using HTML code or code you've grabbed, for example, from YouTube, from the embed code for a video, we need to actually paste that in the text tab because all the coding takes place here. However, with short codes, we can do it in the visual tab right here because short codes are something that's built into WordPress. So it's perfectly fine to paste short codes right here. So once you paste your short code here, on the right, you just want to click on updates to update the changes to this page. And now if you click on view page at the top right here, we can go ahead and check out that page on our blog. So here we are, scroll down, we've got our contact me heading, we've got an email, contact telephone number, and a physical address, and then just below that, we've got a contact form, which is awesome. So if someone wants to contact us, all they need to do is literally just enter their details here, and then click send, and this message will get sent directly to our email, so that is awesome. So let's head back to the WordPress dashboard. So hover over your blog name at the top here and click on dashboard. So what I'm gonna show you now is I'm gonna show you how to create a lead page. So in this case, we're gonna create a cookbook page right here. And then on that cookbook page, we're gonna allow people to sign up to our newsletter to get access to our free cookbook. So we're gonna create a newsletter opt-in form here. So when they sign up, they get automatically added to our newsletter and then they can gain access to our free downloadable cookbook in this case. So once they sign up on this form right here and click submit, they'll then get redirected to our thank you page, which will allow them to click to download their free gift. So let's do that right now. So let's create our lead page right now. So to do that, hover over pages and click add new. So for the heading, I'm going to type cookbook because in this example blog that I'm creating here, okay, let me correct that. So it's cookbook and Let's edit the URL here. We need to fix the URL because what uh, WordPress does is when you type in the page title here and click into the content area, it automatically grabs the um, title from here for the URL. Now, obviously, because I wrote it incorrectly the first time and I click down here, as you can see, it still says cook, cook here. So I want to fix that. So I just need to click on edit here and then write cook book and then click OK here to fix the URL. So now I've done that, I wanna paste in my content for this lead page right here. So I'm gonna paste that right here. So as you can see on this page, all it is is got the heading cookbook and it says subscribe and gain instant access to our bite-sized award-winning cookbook with our top 10 most popular recipes. And then right here, I'm going to put an image for this page. So I'm gonna get rid of that text. Then I'm gonna add an image. So to do that, I'm gonna click down here to put the cursor here. Then I'm gonna click add media. Then I'm going to go to the upload files tab then you can click here to select the image from your computer or drag and drop the image. I'm going to drag and drop the image. So I'm going to reduce the browser screen size. Then I'm going to open the assets folder here. Then I'm going to go to pages and to my cookbook page right here. And then I'm going to drag the image right here and drop that on the page right there. So the image is still uploading. It's finished uploading now, as you can see from the image here. So what I need to do in the bottom right, I just need to click insert into page. And there we go, we've got the image there. I wanna make that a bit bigger. So I'm gonna left click on the image once, click the pencil icon, then under size here, I'm going to hit the drop down and choose large. And then in the bottom right, I'm going to click updates. And there we go, that looks much better. So I'm just gonna click publish to publish this page right now. So at the moment, this cookbook page, it's got the heading cookbook, and then it just says subscribe to gain access to our award-winning cookbook. Then I've got the image of the cookbook here. Then what I'm going to do is add a opt-in form below here so people can enter their name and email, sign up to our newsletter, and then they'll get sent back to a page where they can download the cookbook. So we need to do that right now. So before we do that, I just want to mention what you can put for yours. So obviously your lead page here is going to be specific to your niche. In this case, it's a um, blog about cooking and recipes. So 
the lead magnet here, the thing we're given out for free, is relevant to that. So on yours, yours may be completely different. Yours may be a weight loss blog, so you could give away a free report on top tips for losing weights or top uh, meals to eat for losing weight, whatever. So what you want to do is you want to have that on this page and you want to have a call to action. In this case, it's subscribe and gain access to our, our cookbook, essentially. Your one may be click here to download our weight loss, top 10 weight loss tips, ebook or PDF or small guide or whatever. You just want to have a call to action here, which is telling people what to do, essentially, in order to access their free uh, content. So now that we've created this lead page, we also want to create a thank you page. So when someone visits this page right here and they enter their email and click to sign up to our newsletter, they'll get redirected to another page which will have, it will be a thank you page and it will allow them to download the thing that they've signed up for. So let's create the page, our thank you page with the downloads. And then once we've done that, we'll come back to this page and we'll add a newsletter form so people can actually sign up to our newsletter. So let's create the thank you page. So to do that, hover over pages and click add new. And as the title for this page, I'm going to write thank you. Or you can call this anything really. You can call this access your download or whatever. Call it whatever you want. I'm calling it thank you. And right here, I'm going to paste in some content right here saying click here to download your PDF below. So obviously I haven't uploaded the PDF to our blog yet, so I need to do that right now. So I'm gonna hit return here, and I'm actually going to, let me just publish this page first because we need to upload the media. So I'm going to click publish right here. So this is our thank you page. So now that we've done that, I wanna put the cursor down here. I want to click add media upload files and then I'm going to upload that PDF file so you can click to select that from your computer or you can drag and drop it to this screen. I'm going to drag and drop it. So I'm going to reduce the browser screen size, open the assets folder and I'm going to go over to pages, uh, cookbook and then right here this is the PDF that they can get access to once they sign up to our newsletter. So I'm going to drag this right here to upload that then I'm going to click insert into page right here. So there we go. So when, when they click this, they're going to download the PDF file. So what I want to do is I want to make the link up here somewhere. So I'm actually going to highlight this. I'm going to click the pencil icon to edit that. Then I'm just going to right click and copy this URL here. Then I'm going to come here, click here. So I'm going to highlight here. I'm going to click the link icon here. I'm going to paste the URL for our PDF guides and click apply right here. And there we go. And now I'm just going to get rid of this one. So what I can also do is add an image of the PDF and then make that a link as well. So if someone clicks the image, they'll also download our PDF. So I'm going to add the image here. So I'm going to click add media. And we actually already uploaded the cookbook image from the previous uh, page we created. So inside the media library, I can access that image right here. So I just click that, then click insert into page. And then I can just make this link the same on the image. So if I highlight this, I can click the pencil icon and just right click and copy that URL. Just click apply to close that. Then I'm going to left click on the image, click the pencil icon, link to right here. Currently it's none. I want to hit the drop down. I want to click custom URL. Then I want to paste in that URL right there. And then I want to click on update. And there we go. So I want to click update on the right here to update the changes to this page. So there we go, that's this page created. Let's just test out this page, make sure that everyone can download the PDF file okay. So let's visit the page by clicking view page here. Then I'm gonna scroll down, I'm gonna click here to see if that downloads the PDF file. And the PDF file should be loading right here. There we go, obviously this is just a blank PDF file. I didn't actually create a cookbook. So they can click download here. Now a good thing to do is make this open in a new tab. So if I click back here, to go back to our blog. Let's make these links open in a new tab. So hover over the blog name, click on dashboard to head back to the WordPress dashboard. Then hover over pages and click on all pages. Then hover over our thank you page and click edit. And then we want to highlight the link here and then click the pencil icon to edit. Then click the gear icon on the right here. 
and you can see this open link in new tab you want to click that and then click update there we go so when they click this it will open the PDF again but it will open it in a new tab so that way they stay on our blog so we can do the same thing with the image here so left click on the image once click the pencil icon then if you click this advanced options down here hit the drop down and you can see this again open link in new tab so check that and then click update right here there we go so let's click update on the right to update the changes to this page and now let's go ahead and check out this page so click on view page here scroll down so if we click here it should open there we go it's opened in a new tab it opens the PDF file so let's close that let's check the image as well if we click the image again opens in a new tab and they've got the PDF file here which they can read online if they like or they can click here to download that so let's close that and head back to our WordPress dashboard so hover over the blog name at the top and click on dashboard and now hover over pages and click all pages so I just want to open those pages to just go over what we've basically done here. So I'm going to hover over the cookbook page and right click on view and open that in a new tab. And then I'm going to do the same thing for the thank you page. Hover over the thank you page, right click on view and open that in a new tab. So if I go to this page, this is our cookbook page. So this is essentially our lead page or landing page or squeeze page these all mean the same thing basically it's a lead page is basically where you send someone when you want them to take a specific action in this case we want them to sign up to our newsletter so they can get access to their free um, cookbook in this case so we've got this cookbook page it has a call to action telling our visitors to sign up to our newsletter to gain access to our free guides and then we're going to put a form right here where they can submit their email to sign up to our newsletter and once they do that they will then get redirected to this thank you page right here where they can click to download the free cookbook that they've signed up for so what we need to do now is on our cookbook page we need to add a form so they can sign up to our newsletter so let's do that right now so let's now create the opt-in form so people can sign up to our newsletter and we're going to do that completely free using MailChimp which is a free email marketing software MailChimp's gonna allow you to send your new subscribers straight to their lead magnet and also allow you to send out newsletters to your subscribers with more valuable content so we're gonna do this and get this set up right now so let's head on over to MailChimp and sign up for our free account so go over to MailChimp.com so that's MailChimp.com and you can also search that in Google so go over to Google and type MailChimp and you can see that right there MailChimp so go over to MailChimp.com and then click on sign up then you want to enter your email address here and choose a username and a password so I'm going to do that right now so I'm going to enter an email address here and then username this is just an example so I'm just going to put website whiz zero you can put whatever you want and then for the password you can just enter a password right here so enter your email username and password and then click get started so as you can see they've sent us a confirmation email to our email address so you want to head on over to your email address click to open that confirmation email and then click right here to activate that account and as you can see you need to complete the capture so just click I'm not a robot and then complete the capture um, right here and then click confirm sign up so then you want to put your name right here and then click on continue obviously I'm not putting I'm just putting some sample information here because this is just a dummy test account that I'm just creating just to show you how to get set up so obviously you want to put your real details here so it says here what's the name of your business if your blog is called pinkjackets.com then you just want to put pink jackets here and then for your website obviously pinkjackets.com now I'm not going to put that here because that's not my website I'm just going to put some random text here this is an example blog and then this is an example blog.com I'm pretty sure no one would have bought that domain name so that's fine then click continue and again you need to put your details here obviously you need to put your real details I'm just creating this example account so I'm just going to put some random stuff right here
and I'm just going to leave everything as default whatever they've put here then I'm going to click continue and it says does your business sell anything online I'm going to choose no in this case I'll leave that up to you whether you want to put that or not but most of you aren't going to be selling anything from the start so you can choose no as well then click continue then just click continue again and then just click let's go there we go we're all done let's click next and then just dismiss this so the first thing you want to do is click on create list here so under create list on the right click on create list and then at the top here click create list again and we want to enter our details right here so list name if your blog is pinkjackets.com then you can just put pink jackets newsletter and it gives you an example down here what to put once you click here you can see right here it gives you good examples so I said my one in this case is this is an example blog so I'm gonna put this is an example blog newsletter now the from email address this is the email address that your newsletter emails will show from so if someone clicks to reply if you read down here if someone clicks to reply to your email then it will get sent to this email here so I'm gonna just use this email here and it tells you that uh, email is not the best option to use so if you've got a email for your website so if your website's pinkjackets.com and you have an email such as info at pinkjackets.com then that will be a better email to use here but in this case I'm just using Gmail so that's fine from name here again just put your domain name so if it's pinkjackets.com then just put pinkjackets in this case I'm saying this is an example blog and as you can see down here when you start typing it tells you some it gives you some suggestions of what you can put so right here remind people how they signed up to your list so as you can see down here it says you are receiving this email because you opted in at our website for example so you can just put something similar so you are receiving if I can spell you are receiving this email newsletter newsletter which you signed up to on pinkjackets com if that's your domain name or you can just leave it like that so that's that next one company organization as I said before this is just your domain name so if you're pinkjackets.com then just put pink jackets here and then address we put this before so that's all filled in phone number that's optional so you can just leave that blank and then just click on save if you want you can check some of these I'm gonna leave this off by default so if you want to get an email notification when someone subscribes then you can check that and each time someone subscri unsubscribes you'll get notified by email I'm gonna leave this blank or if you do want to take advantage of some of these a good one would be to have a daily summary so you can have each day you'll get a summary of how many people subscribed and unsubscribed so that's a good one to have right there so I'm gonna click save and there we go we've just created our newsletter list for our blog so what you want to do now is click the drop down here and click on account and then click on the drop down for extras here and click API keys and if you scroll down you can see create a key here so click on create a key then scroll down and you can see our API key right here so you just want to left click on that right click and copy so what this API key does is it will allow us to connect from our WordPress blog directly to our MailChimp newsletter so we can do that all from within our WordPress dashboard just by using the API key here so note down your API key somewhere on your computer so what we want to do now is come back to our WordPress dashboard and we want to install a plugin a MailChimp plugin so that we can connect our newsletter to our blog so to do that hover over plugins and click add new then in the search box at the top here you want to type MailChimp that's one word MailChimp for WordPress and as you can see right here it's loading right now there we go MailChimp for WordPress this is the one we want and so you just want to click on install now and that's installing as you can see and now it's installed we can now click on activate so you can see the MailChimp for WordPress plugin right here so you want to click on settings right here so click on settings and we can enter our API key right here now if for some reason you navigated away from that page then it's no problem you can find that again on the left by hovering over MailChimp here MailChimp for WP WP just stands for WordPress so hover over MailChimp for WP and then click on MailChimp here and you'll come to this page right here 
So you just want to paste in your API key right here and then click save changes. And there you go, you can see status is now connected. So we've now connected our WordPress with our MailChimp account, which is awesome because now we can automatically sign up people to our newsletter directly from our WordPress blog. So on the left here, underneath MailChimp for WordPress, if you now click on forms right here, and then you can see this, what is the name of this form? And then to which MailChimp list should this form subscribe to? So you can call this newsletter and then you can check this right here and then click add new form. There, so there we go, our form is now called newsletter and we can see down here what information is asked for from our newsletter form. So at the moment it's just asking for the email address so it'll be a good idea to ask for their first name as well. Just that way we can customize the email and just make it a little bit more tailored to the individual. Um, so to click on first name here and then click on is this field required, check that and then click add to form. And you can see now in the code down here the form will ask for the email and the first name and then the submit button right here. So scroll down and click save changes right here to save those changes and then click on settings right here. So you can see this list this form subscribes to so we want to make sure our list is checked right here. This is our newsletter make sure that's checked and then use double opt-in. What double opt-in is is when someone signs up to your newsletter they'll then receive an email which says click to activate your subscription to our newsletter so if someone doesn't click that activation link in the email they don't get signed up to your newsletter so you might want to turn this off so that when some, someone signs up through your contact form they're directly automatically added to your newsletter they don't need to click any activation link in their email so you might want to turn it off uh, so choose no here and the other important thing is down here this um, redirect URL so once someone successfully signs up to our newsletter they can get sent to a specific URL now in our case if you remember we created a thank you page which has the link to which they can click to download their um, free cookbook so we want to put that page URL right here so now let's grab that page URL so hover over pages and all pages and I don't want to lose this page so I'm going to open it in a new tab so hover over pages right click on all pages and click open in new tab so I'm going to hover over the thank you page and I can click view here to view that page on our blog and then this is the thank you page so this is what they click to download their free cookbook so I'm just going to copy the URL for this page then I'm going to head back to the first tab and in this redirect URL after successful sign up, I'm going to paste that page right here, the URL. So that way, once they sign up to our newsletter, they get automatically redirected to this page where they can download their freebie. So now that we've done that, scroll down to the bottom and click Save Changes. Then if you click here, Get Short Code, we can grab the short code for this newsletter. So click Get Short Code, right click and copy that here, and then click OK. And just like before, we want to paste that short code on our cookbook page. So let's go to the cookbook page. So hover over Pages, click on All Pages, and go to our cookbook page. So this is our lead page, which is the page that they sign up to join our newsletter in exchange for our free cookbook. So hover over that page, the cookbook page, click on edit. So we've said sign up and gain instant access to our award winning cookbook. Then we've put an image of the cookbook. So underneath that I want to put the opt-in form. So I'm going to click here to the right of the image and hit enter on your keyboard. So the cursor's down here. Then I want to right click and paste that short code right there. Then I want to scroll to the top. On the right click updates to update the changes to this page. So let's go ahead and check out this page now. It should have the opt-in form. So click on view page here and scroll down. So this is our cookbook page and we say subscribe to gain access to our free cookbook. Scroll down and here we go. Boom. We can put the visitor, can put their email address, their first name and click sign up and they'll get signed up to our newsletter and then they'll get redirected to the page where they can download the cookbook. So I just want to show you that, test this out just to make sure it actually works. So what we want to do is we want to visit this URL in a different web browser. So we can just test this form to make sure it actually works. So copy the URL for this page 
and if you've got a different web browser I'm using Google Chrome here so I'm going to open up a different web browser so that I can test this page make sure it works so I'm opening up this page now in Microsoft Edge so I'm going to paste that right here to open up that page so I'm gonna scroll down and I'm going to so I'm gonna enter some test details here so email address I'm just gonna put anything here at gmail.com and then first name I'll just put whatever Anna and then click sign up so there we go this person has signed up to our newsletter and now they're automatically directed to the thank you page where they can click here to download their free guide so as you can see everything's working fine let's just go to our MailChimp account and just make sure that this person actually is now registered in our MailChimp account so let's do that now so I've gone back to MailChimp here so click on lists right here and then let's just get rid of that dismiss that you can see right here so this is our list we created and you can see here one subscriber so everything's working perfectly fine now so what happens is when people subscribe they'll be added to our list right here. So if you want to send out a message to all of your subscribers, you can do that through here. So let's head back to the WordPress dashboard. Everything's working fine. So let's go back to our WordPress dashboard. So right now we've got this lead page, which allows our visitors to sign up for our free cookbook. Let's add the same thing. We want to add this opt-in box right here, but we want to add it in the sidebar as well, just to give more opportunities for people to sign up on our blog. So let's do that right now. So let's head back to the WordPress dashboard. So hover over your blog name at the top here and click on dashboard and then hover over appearance and click on widgets. So you can see this MailChimp sign up form here. So just left click and drag that to the top of the sidebar and just drop that right here. So the title for this is just newsletter. I'm going to paste in something a little bit more enticing. So I'm going to say sign up for our free cookbook. So in your case, you may want to say sign up for our free weight loss guide or whatever it is you're um, giving out here. So just make the title a little bit more interesting than just newsletter. So I've put sign up for our free cookbook. Now I'm going to click save. And now we can head on over to our blog to check out that in sidebar. So hover over the blog name at the top and click visit site. And as you can see on the right here in the sidebar, we've got this sign up for our free cookbook. So it says sign up for our free cookbook and then they can enter their email, first name and click sign up. So this is awesome. So we've got this opt-in form not only in the sidebar, which appears on every single page on our blog. We also created a lead page, which also had the contact form. So this is awesome. So let's head back to the WordPress dashboard. So hover over the blog name at the top here and click on dashboard. So what we want to do now is add some social sharing elements to our blog. So if we head on over to TechCrunch, you can see they do an awesome job with their social buttons on their site throughout their blog. So this is awesome because when content gets shared, it can potentially go viral and that will lead to your blog getting a ton of free traffic, which is awesome. So we're going to incorporate the same social sharing elements in our own blog, just like TechCrunch. So let's do that right now. So what we want to do is add some social sharing elements on our blog. So hover over plugins and click add new. So we can add a social sharing plugin. So in the search box at the top here, you want to type simple share buttons adder. And so I'll leave this, the details for all of these plugins in the video description. So it's simple share buttons adder. And you can see that right here, simple share buttons adder. So click on install now and then click activate. And then you want to, you can see that right here, simple share buttons adder. So you want to click on settings right here. And then you can see this location. So you can choose the location where you want these social sharing buttons to display. So I want them on the home page. So I'm going to click right here to add those on the home page. I want those on the blog post. So I'm going to click here to add that to the blog post. And I want it on the category page. So I'm going to click here to add that to the categories. And I also want it on the pages on our blog. So I'm going to click here. So now what you want to do is you can add the um, you can customize the text if you want if you want you can leave it as a default I'm going to leave the default text but if you want to add something else you can add the text right here that you want so as you can see right here these are the social sharing buttons that are going to display throughout our blog so if you want any more these are the ones by default if you want any more you can just drag those right here so if you want to add Pinterest, then you can just left click here, drag the Pinterest icon right here. And you can also reorder these as well if you like. So you can add as many as you want. If you want dig, just drag the dig icon here and order it however you like. 
So I've just gonna add a couple here. So these are the social sharing buttons that are going to display throughout our blog. So all you need to do now is scroll up to the top and click this save icon right here to save our changes. So let's now check out our blog. So hover over the blog name and click visit site. And then if you scroll down, let's go to this blog post. So let's scroll down, let's click on continue reading. Now you can see even on the home page, we've got our social sharing buttons right here, which is awesome. So we've got it here, we've got it here, and we've got it here. So let's actually go to one of the blog posts. So click continue reading. And you can see on the actual blog page, if you scroll down, we've got some more social sharing buttons. So this is really awesome. This will just help to spread some shares for your blog and that will get a lot of extra traffic to your blog, especially if, if a content of yours goes viral, then you're just going to get flooded with a ton of free traffic. So this is awesome and this is essential to add to your blog. So another thing is we can add our social links. So if you've got any social media accounts for this blog, Facebook, Twitter, whatever, we can add those here too. So I'm going to show you how to do that right now. So let's head back to the WordPress dashboard. So hover over your blog name and click on dashboard. So we want to add another plugin for this. So hover over plugins and click on add new. Then in the search box at the top here, type top 25 social icons and then hit enter on the keyboard and there we go you can see the top 25 social icons plugin right here so you just want to click on install now and now that's installed click on activate and there we go so what we want to do now is hover over appearance and click on widgets so you want to scroll down and you want to grab this top 25 social icons widget scroll up to the top and dump this in the sidebar at the top. So what you can do is enter the URLs for any social accounts you've got for this blog. So for example, if you've got a Facebook account, you can put http www.facebook.com forward slash whatever your URL is. You can do the same for Twitter if you want a Twitter icon displaying on your blog. So let's put http www.twitter dot com forward slash whatever the URL is. If you've got a YouTube you can put http www.youtube.com forward slash whatever and then scroll down if you've got an Instagram you can put http www.instagram.com forward slash whatever your URL is. Then you want to just scroll down to the bottom when you finished put in all of your social accounts click save. So if you scroll up to the top, let's just click this drop down to minimize that. We want to drop another top 25 social icons widget in this area right here, content bottom two. So hit the drop down to open up this area, scroll down and on the left, grab this top 25 social icons widget again, just like before. And we, this time we want to drop it right here underneath content bottom two. And again, we want to put our URLs for our social accounts. Now, if you open up the one on the left that we just created, so hit the drop down we can literally just copy the URLs from here and then paste them on the right right here. So that just saves some time so we don't have to type them all out again. So copy them, copy the Twitter one and paste it here, scroll down, or copy the YouTube one and then paste that here on the right. Scroll down, copy the Instagram one and then paste that on the right and then scroll down to the bottom when you're finished and click save. So if we go on over to our blog to take a look at that right there to see how that looks. So hover over your blog name and click visit site. And if you scroll down now, you can see in the sidebar, we got this follow us, which is really cool. And then also if you scroll down to the bottom and let's go to one of our blog posts and scroll down, you can see we've got this follow us down here at the bottom of the blog post. So this is really cool. So not only have we added the social sharing elements to all of our blogs and throughout our blog right here, we've also added our social links here at the bottom and then here at the top in our sidebar. So this is really, really cool. So let's head back to the WordPress dashboard. Hover over the blog name and click on dashboard. So what we want to do now is we want to create a custom menu right here at the top of our blog so we can list some essential pages and blog posts. So let's go ahead and do that right now. So to do this, hover over appearance and click on menus. And we want to give this menu a name so you can just call this main menu or whatever you want and then click create menu on the right here. And then you want to select primary menu here to make this menu primary menu and then click save menu. 
So what we want to do now is we want to add some items to this menu. So the first button we want on our menu is a home button. So someone can click the home button and go back to the home page. So to do that, we want to use a custom link. So hit the drop down next to custom link. So for the link text, you want to type home here. And then for the URL, you want to put your home page URL. So in this case, it's if you're blog was pinkjackets.com then you want to put http www.pinkjackets.com in this case mine is this one so I'm going to paste that right there so you can just copy that from your web browser and then click on add to menu so we've got a home link right here if we hit the drop down here to close this out we can also add some other pages so right here under pages hit the drop down you can select about me and contact me and cookbook to add those three pages to our navigation menu. So select those and then click add to menu. So there we go. And you can reorder these by dragging them. So I want home first, then I want about me second. So I'm gonna drag that underneath home. And then I want the cookbook and then contact me. So click save menu. So what I wanna do now is I wanna add some categories in our navigation menu as well. So I'm gonna click on custom links here and I'm going to paste in recipes here and for the URL I'm just going to put a hash here and then I'm going to put add to menu basically what that hash does is it makes this not a clickable link so if someone clicks this nothing happens so I'm going to close the custom links here by hitting the drop down then I'm going to click the categories here to open that one up and I'm going to select appetizer, dessert, and main course. So these are my free blog categories I created earlier on in the tutorial. So now that I've selected those, I'm going to click add to menu. And what you can actually do is if I drag these inwards to make these indented, what that essentially does is when we hover over recipes, it would display these free categories. So actually, I want the contact me last. So I'm going to drag that underneath here. So we're in the navigation menu, we've got home, we've got about me, we've got cookbook, we've got recipes. And when you hover over recipes, you're gonna have the appetizer category, dessert category, and main course. And then I've got contact me. So let me just save the menu by clicking save menu. And I can show you exactly what that looks like on our blog. So hover over the blog name and click visit site. And you can see that right here in the menu, we've got a home button, we've got about me, cookbook, recipes, which when you hover over that, it lists the appetizer category, dessert category, and main course. And then we've got contact me. So this is awesome. So what I wanna do right now is I wanna show you how to add a gravatar so the author of the blog post can show up here as an image, which looks really, really cool. So we're gonna do that right now. So let's head back to the WordPress dashboard. So hover over the blog name and click on dashboard. And then hover over settings and click on discussion. So what you want to do is scroll down to the bottom and then you want to select Gravatar logo here and then click save changes. So what we're gonna do now is hover over users and click on your profile here. So you wanna scroll down to the bottom and you can see right here next to profile picture, we've got this link Gravatar. So you wanna click this, but you want to right click this and open that in a new tab so we don't lose dashboard here. So head on over to the second tab, gravatar.com. So we just wanna sign up for a free account so that we can upload our picture and have our photo throughout our blog posts as the author. So to do that, click on create your own Gravatar here. And you want to enter your email address, a username and password. So let's do that right now. So I'm going to enter an email address here, username and a password. So enter your details here and then click sign up. So as you can see, they've sent a confirmation email to our email address here. So you want to log into your email account and click on the confirmation link. So I'm going to do that right now. So once you log into your email account, you can see now I've got this welcome to MailChimp, this is just from earlier. So as you can see in my inbox, I can't see any messages. So what you wanna do, if you're using Gmail like me, you wanna click more here and you wanna click on the spam folder. As you can see, it's hidden right here, wordpress.com. You wanna activate that. So this has accidentally landed in the spam folder. So you wanna open that email and click to activate the account. Now, because this email has landed in the spam folder by mistake, uh, these links are not clickable. So I can't actually click to activate this so I need to move this out of the spam folder in order to click activate account so I'm going to click not spam at the top here then I'm going to go back to my inbox 
and the message is right here so click wordpress.com activate and there we go so now I can click this link activate account and now my account is activated so we can now sign in so click sign in to Gravatar so as you can see it says whoops looks like you don't have any images yet so click here to add the image so let's click this right here and then you want to click upload new here and then you want to choose the image from your computer so I'm going to do that right now so I'm going to go into the assets folder and I'm just going to select this image right here as the Gravatar. Obviously you want to upload an image of yourself but this is just an example blog. So once you've clicked that you want to click next and then if you want you can crop the image like so and then you can click crop and finish and then you can choose a rating for your image this is just a G rated so this is fine um, so I'm going to click G and then scroll down and we're pretty much done here so let's head back to our blog now so this is in the first tab so we inside the WordPress dashboard so let's check out our blog so if you hover over the blog name and click visit site and uh, let's head to one of our blog posts so let's go to this one and if you scroll up here you can see that the image actually isn't displaying right now it's just got this gravatar link and I'm going to show you the reason why this is happening so let's go into our WordPress dashboard so hover over the blog name and click on dashboard then hover over users and click your profile so if you scroll down you can see the email I used for this account is this one right here info at website wizard TV however in my gravatar account I used this email right here so because these two emails don't match that's the reason why this image is not displaying on the blog so if you want the image to display properly the email you use inside your gravatar account has to match the email you you've got for your user inside your WordPress dashboard so I'm going to show you that right now so I'm going to go to my gravatar account Account. I'm going to copy this email that I've used for this account. I'm going to go to the WordPress dashboard and paste that email here. So now that email is the same inside my WordPress dashboard and my Gravatar account. So once you paste, the emails are the same. I've pasted the new email. I'll scroll to the bottom and click update profile. So now the emails match, I'm going to go back to my blog. So hover over the blog name at the top and click visit site. Now let's go down and visit one of the blog posts. So I'm going to go to this one, click continue reading. And then if you scroll up, boom, there you go. You can see now the image from Gravatar is displaying right here. So this is really cool. It just makes the blog come alive because you've got the author image. And you can, if you want, I have put the blog name here as the um, author name. But if you want, you can put your real name if you want to brand yourself for example as the author you can do that so this just looks really really cool so what we want to do now is we want to make our blog SEO friendly so that our blog can start showing up in the search engine and getting us some SEO traffic so let's get started so the first thing we want to do is we want to come over to settings and then click on permalinks and you want to make sure post name is selected here so select post name and click save changes now we already did that in this tutorial but I just want to explain the reason why that's important for SEO so basically what you can do for SEO is this option right here it will make the post or page name become the URL for that post or page and the reason why that's important is so that we can include our target keywords inside the post or page title so that way we get the target keyword inside the URL as well so that's great for SEO so that we can start driving free search engine traffic to our blog which is awesome so let's now start to install some SEO plugins so hover over plugins and click add new and then in the search box here you want to type Yoast SEO and hit enter on the keyboard and you can see the Yoast SEO plugin right here so go ahead and click install now and once that's finished installing it will say activate so then go ahead and click on activate so now that we've activated the Yoast SEO plugin as you can see down here you want to click on settings and then on the left here underneath SEO you can see this XML sitemap so go ahead and click on that and as you can see right here it's already enabled so we don't have to do anything right here but I just want to briefly explain what that does 
So what the sitemaps will do is they will essentially structure your new content, your blog posts and pages, etc. in a way that it allows the search engines to index that content quickly so that your new content for your blog can show up in the search engines. And that's great because obviously it means we get more search engine traffic, so we get a ton of free traffic coming to our blog. So this XML sitemap functionality will allow our blog content to show up in the search engines quickly so that we can get more search engine traffic. So let's head on over to our pages. So hover over pages and click on all pages and then let's go over to our cookbook page. So hover over that cookbook page and click edit. In your case you may have created this is the lead page for this blog which in this case was a cookbook page. In your case it may be something else if your blog is about weight loss and you created a free weight loss guide as your lead magnet then your leads page may be weight loss, for example. So it depends what you created. But whatever your lead page was, go ahead and hover over that and click on edit. So if you take a look on the right here, you can see we've got this SEO check right here and currently it's not available. So what you want to do is scroll down to the bottom here and you can see this Yoast SEO and it's got all these options right here. Now if you're not seeing this, all of this stuff, then it could be that this is closed, this little drop down. So if you hit the drop down, you can see right here it may look like that. And if it does look like that for you, then all you need to do is click the drop down here to open up all of these options right here. So what this plugin does is it will allow us to customize how our blog pages will show up in the search engine. So right now you can see this snippet preview here. So this is a preview of how this page on our blog will currently display in the search engines like Google and Bing etc. So if you want to customize this then you can do that and we can do that for SEO reasons to optimize this for our target keywords. And if you don't know what a keyword is it's simply the words or phrases people are searching inside Google. So if you want this page right here to show up in Google when people are searching the keyword or key phrase delicious dishes then that will be our target keyword. So if we want this page showing up in Google when people are searching delicious dishes, then we can optimize this content right here for the keyword delicious dishes. So let's do that right now. So what you can do to optimize this page for the search engines is you can make sure your target keyword is in the title and description right here. So as an example, let's say our target keyword was delicious dishes. So what you want to do is just edit this content to make sure you've got that in the title and description. So you can click edit snippet here and this right here, this title is what you're seeing up here and the slug here is the URL which you're seeing right here and then the meta description here is all of this text right here so we can customize that now delicious dishes that's already in the title but I just want to show you how to put that in if you want to change it up slightly so let me say let's click here and then type get our top 10 delicious whoops if I can spell that delicious dishes cookbook or actually I could just say top 10 delicious dishes cookbook and right here so as you can see I've got the keyword right here within the title and now I can do that for the description as well so I'll say check out our free delicious dishes cookbook over on our awesome blog and obviously you can see right here I've made a spelling mistake so it underlines that in red so you can correct that. So as you can see if in this example the target keyword is delicious dishes so I've got that here in the heading and also in the meta description and then right down I want to copy that and just paste that here as the focus keyword and then that way all of these checks can be um, focused around this keyword right here. So then once you've done that you just want to press on update and then if you scroll down it will tell you an overall summary of your SEO so it tells us it needs improvement so if you scroll down you can see it tells us basically what we need to do so the green ones that's fine you can ignore those 
the orange and the red ones are what you want to look at. So it says the focus keyword does not appear in the URL for this page. So another thing you could do to optimize this further is you can actually include the target keyword inside the URL for this page. And that's another way how to optimize it. Now, I'm not going to do that now, but that's just something that for you to keep in mind. So if you did want to do that, just click on edit snippet and you can change the slug right here. Actually, let me just do this. Let's just put delicious dishes right here as the slug and I'll bring these together put a little dash here and let's just make this all lowercase there we go and as you can see the URL has now changed so if I click update now you're gonna see the SEO look already you can see it says okay so it's already improved the SEO for this one so there we go so SEO is okay let's see what else it's recommended so you can see the page title is too short user space to add a keyword variations and call to actions so we can optimize this further by making our heading a little longer and maybe adding some call to action so let's click edit snippet top 10 delicious cookbooks dash grab it now something like that and uh, let's um or grab it for free today and as you can see this bar is turning green now which indicates that we've improved the heading and as you can see this is orange so let's add some more text down here to fill out this as well so check out our free delicious cookbook over on our blog we show you all of our best recipes we have ever created or something like that and now you can see they're both green if i click update now and then scroll down and check the checklist as you can see we've got a lot more things are going green now so we've improved quite a bit now we've just got a couple of oranges and a couple of reds so no links appear in this page consider adding some as appropriate so if you want you can add some links in this content and that will help to improve your SEO as well and also the images on this page do not have alt attributes containing the focus keyword so basically what that means is on this image right here we can make the alt text contain our target keywords as well so our target keyword in this example example is delicious dishes so if I copy that what you can do is you can click on this image right here so this only applies if you've got images on the page if you don't have any images on the page then you don't need to do this but we've got an image right here so you can click on the image once click the pencil icon and then you can see right here it's alternative text that's basically the alt text so you can make sure the target keyword is in here so I'll put delicious dishes cookbook so there we go, I've put the target keyword also in the alt text for this image so I can click update right here. Then I'll click update here to update the changes. And now if I scroll down, check our little checklist. There we go, this one's gone green now. So a couple of other things, This the text contains 22 words, this is below the recommended of 300 words. So basically what that's saying is the page should have around 300 words. So this page right here has only got a brief amount of text so if we want to improve that slightly we can add more text here so that will make that one go orange or green and then also the focus keyword doesn't appear in the first paragraph so if you want to optimize this further you can include the target keyword in the first paragraph on this page so let me just do that now so subscribe and gain instant access to our bite-sized award-winning cookbook with our top 10 most popular delicious dishes and recipes there we go so here's our target keyword which is in the first paragraph so let's click update right here on the right to update the changes to this page and there we go if we scroll down now and there we go that's gone orange now so as you can see we've done a much better job with the SEO and this last one right here we just need to add some more text to the page so there we go so as you can see you can use this SEO Yoast SEO plugin to optimize this page for SEO so that this uh, page can show up higher in the search engines which ultimately means we get more free traffic from search engines like Google and Bing which is awesome so you essentially want to do the same thing on the pages on your blog that you want optimized for search engines. So we've just done this on our cookbook page. If you've got more pages, so let's hover over pages and click all pages. So if you want to uh, optimize the other pages on your blog for the search engines, then you just do the same thing again. So you would hover over the page, click on edit, and then scroll down to the bottom of this page, and you'll see this Yoast SEO. It may be closed like 
like this so if it is you just need to click this to open that up and then you can just try to make sure your target keywords are in the title url content and then just read the um and then once you add those in click update and then just read the suggestions down here how you can um, optimize things further for that target keyword and as I mentioned before about optimizing the images on the pages, that's good too because when, let's say the target keyword, let's say um, this image right here, if I left click on that and click the pencil icon and this alternative text. So if I make sure I've included my target keyword here somewhere inside this phrase, then that will help this image show up in search engines like Google Images. So that will help to bring us um, search engine traffic to our blog when people are searching in Google Images as well. So that's another great thing to do. Now another thing to keep in mind when you're creating your blog posts and your pages on your blog, you want to make sure all of this content that you're writing here is 100% original and unique. So what that means, so basically if you're going and copying this content from another blog or website and you're just literally pasting it on your own um, blog, then Google will see that that's been copied from somewhere else and so it will penalize your blog in the search engine so it will prevent this page or post from showing up high in the search engines because essentially you've copied the content from somewhere else. So make sure you're writing 100% original unique content on your blog to optimize your blog for the search engines so you can show up as high as possible to ultimately get more free search engine traffic. Now another thing to keep in mind is earlier we were adding our target keyword inside the content on a page. So you want to make sure you only do that a couple of times throughout the content because if you include your target keyword multiple times throughout your content, Google will actually see that as keyword stuffing and again it will penalize this page or post from showing up high in search engines. So if you are including your target keyword in the content, just do it once or twice. Don't go over the top and include it multiple times because Google will know that you're trying to game the system and then it will just penalize your blog post. And then it so basically will push it down lower in the search engines. Now we obviously want our content to move higher up in the search engines so that we can get free traffic from the search engines. So just make sure you only include your target keywords once or twice in the content. So if we head on over to settings here and then click on reading, you can see this right here, search engine visibility. So you want to make sure that this is unchecked because if this is checked, it will discourage search engines from indexing this site. So basically what that means is it will stop our blog from showing up in the search engines. Obviously we want our blog to show up in search engines so we can get free search engine traffic. So make sure this is unchecked and then click save changes. So another thing we can do is hover over settings and click on right in here and then scroll down to the bottom and you can see this update services right here. So the URLs in this list are the ping list essentially. So what the ping list is, is when we create new content on our blog, it will notify key websites that our blog's got new content. So that will help our new content get indexed fast by the search engines so that our new content can show up quickly in Google so that we can get free search engine traffic. So we can improve this process by adding additional URLs right here and I'm going to show you how to do that right now. So I'm over on our website websitewizard.tv forward slash WordPress ping list and I'll include this link in the video description as well. So if you visit this URL here you'll be on this page so all you need to do is highlight all of these URLs here in this list and then right click copy, head back to the WordPress dashboard and then you want to paste these URLs below this existing one. So do not delete this, don't delete this one. Hit enter on the keyboard and then paste these URLs we just copied below this one. So I'm gonna do that right now. And then once you've done that, click save changes. So these are just some basic things we can do to optimize our blog for the search engines so that we can get free search engine traffic. So another thing you can do to get free traffic to your blog is you can use social media such as YouTube, Facebook and Twitter and Instagram. So just like I'm doing in this video, I'm helping you create your WordPress blog and you can do the same thing in your niche, whether it be weight loss or cooking or whatever. If you can offer people free helpful information that's useful to them and then offer them more information on your blog, then that's another great way to get free traffic 
to your blog. So if you do the SEO as well as the social media, then that's a great combination for getting free traffic to your blog. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you how to set up Google AdSense so you can have ads on your blog like this and you can start making money from your blog. So let's get to it. So there's a few requirements. The first one is you need to be at least 18 years old to create or set up a Google AdSense account. And the second thing is you need to make at least $10 to activate your AdSense account. And the third thing is you need to make at least $100 through your AdSense ads in order to link your bank account or your PayPal account to your AdSense account so that you can start getting paid. So you won't get paid from Google AdSense until you've reached a minimum of $100. So just be mindful of that. So if you don't make $100 in the first month, then it will roll over to the second month. So we're going to add some AdSense ad blocks on our blog. So this is an example ad. So when people interact with this ad, you can get paid for that ad as a lump sum at the end of each month. And as I mentioned before, you only get paid if you meet the $100 minimum. So once your account reaches $100, then you'll get paid. So let's get started with setting up AdSense. So let's head on over to Google. So you just want to type in AdSense sign up here and then hit enter on the keyboard. And as you can see, the first result is sign up for AdSense. So go ahead and click on that. So you've got two options here. You can use your existing Google account to sign up here, or you can create a new one. I'm going to create a new one for this tutorial just to show you how to do that. So I'm going to click create account. And then you just need to fill out your details here. Now, I recommend you definitely fill out all of your correct details here. That way it, you won't have any problems when you're getting paid. So just make sure you enter all your correct details here. Obviously this is just an example account so I'm just going to enter some dummy details here but for, in your case you obviously want to enter your real details here so you can make sure that you get paid properly. So I'm just going to add some sample details here for this test account. So just scroll down and click to agree to the terms. And there we go, verify your email address. So I need to click the verification link inside my email. So I'll do that right now. So I'm just logging into my email account here. And this is just a dummy email account. So don't email me on this because I won't get your messages. So here we go. Let me go over to my email and go to the inbox. So here's my email account verification. So this is a Google email verification. So open that up and just click the link to verify and continue to Google AdSense. So here we go. So we've now activated our Google AdSense account. So the next step is to enter your blog address right here. So if your blog was pinkjackets.com, then you would want to enter http www.pinkjackets.com. Com. Now this is just an example account so I'm just going to say this is an example and e e e there we go I'm sure no one owns that domain and then select your language here so I'm going to select English and then just click on save and continue. So select your country here which is where you reside and the time zone and an account type if you're an individual, select individual. If you're a business, select business. So I'm going to select individual here. Then you want to complete all your details here. Now, obviously, you want to make sure you're entering real and valid details here. So this is just an example. So I've just put some dummy content here. But in your case, you want to make sure you're putting all the correct details. So put your name, address, city, contact telephone number, email. And how did you get to know AdSense? You can put whatever you want here. It's not really that important. Now, when you apply for AdSense, you you want to make sure a few think you meet their requirements because they won't automatically accept everyone's account so you need to make sure you're sticking to their rules and regulations so for example you want to make sure your blog posts have at least 500 words in them because Google obviously want their ads displayed on sites that have a good chunk of content so make sure all of your blog posts have at least 500 words and you also want to make sure you're using original content so don't go copying content from another blog and just pasting it on your site 
make sure you write in 100% original content on your own blog. So those are a couple of things that will help get your uh, application approved. And a couple of other things to make note of is that Google doesn't allow their ads to be displayed on sites that promote um, adult content or hate and stuff like that. So if you've got an adult based site then you're not going to get approved basically. So those are just a few things to keep in mind when you're applying. So once you've completed all your details here, go ahead and click submit my application. So once you submit your application, Google's going to send you an email telling you that they've reviewed your application and letting you know whether you've been approved or not. If you're not approved, they'll tell you the reasons why, so you can go ahead and make those changes. But hopefully you'll all be approved as long as you're sticking to the guidelines, you're writing original content on your blog, you're creating minimum 500 words per blog post, so there's actually content on your blog, and you've got more than sort of 5 to 10 pages on your blog if you've got a lot of blog posts that will help as well so just make sure you've got a lot of content on your blog before you apply to have ads on your blog so once your application's approved google will send you an email saying welcome your application has been approved and just have a link in there saying get started now i'm not going to submit this application because it's just got a load of um, dummy details but once you submit yours you'll get an email from google telling you that you your application has been approved and to get started so I'm now going to show you how to log into your AdSense account. So to log into your AdSense account, just go to Google and search AdSense, login or just AdSense. And here we go. You can see this right here, AdSense. So go and click on that. And then you want to click on sign in at the top here. So I'm going to log in. So I'll pause the video while I log in. So as I mentioned before, I'm going to block out all of my details here because I obviously want to protect my account. But I'm going to show you how to grab that code for your ads and post those on your blog. So once you've logged into your AdSense account, if you want to see your daily earnings and monthly earnings, you can just click on home right here. And if you click the gear icon here, you can click on payments and see how much Google's actually paid you each month. So you're going to want to create an ad unit for your blog. So click on my ads here and then click on new ad unit. So you want to give your ad a name. So I'm just going to call this ad one or you can call this ad sidebar. So you know which ad this is. I'm going to call this ad sidebar because we're going to place this ad in the sidebar of our blog. So give it a head in here and then you can choose the sizes you want right here. As you can see, they give you some recommended ones or you can hit the drop down and choose horizontal banner and choose a different size, rectangular, etc. But let me go to recommended because they know the best ones to use. So as you can see, See, this one right here has a little icon of a mobile device and so does this one so these two right here are responsive which is awesome you want to be using responsive ads on your blog because when people are viewing your blog from a mobile device then the ads will show properly so you can still earn money from your blog so I'm going to choose this one right here automatic size responsive so just go ahead and click on that. You can click on different ones here to select them. I want this one right here, the automatic size. And so I'm going to click on that to select that one. And I'll just show you that on the blog. So if I go over to my blog, scroll down, that's going to be this ad right here that's going to show up. So we're grabbing the code. We're going to paste it in the sidebar. So ads like this can show up in the sidebar on our blog. And then if you scroll down, you can see ad type here. And if you hit drop down, there's different options. So use text and display ads. This one will earn you the most money. So choose text and display ads, which is selected by default. And as you can see right here, they tell you that it's recommended based on potential revenue. So in the next option, you can see text and style. So hit the drop down there. So we can basically choose the different color schemes for our ads so if you I recommend you choose either the default one here or minimalist and as you can see down here there's a preview of how this looks so we've currently got default selected so it's got the blue heading the black text and the blue button if I select this one for example you can see that it's got a black background, pink text, white text, and a blue button. So if you choose ads which match the color scheme of your blogs, then that will help to increase revenue. Now, if you're just getting started out, I recommend you choose the default one, as that's a good overall one to choose. 
So I recommend the default one. So this is the best option to if you're just getting started out and you're a complete beginner. Blue buttons and blue text usually convert the best anyway. So that's a good all rounder to start off with. So for the text add style, click on the default one and let me click to minimize that and then scroll down and you want to click save and get code. And then you just want to copy the code right here. So copy all of this code and we're going to paste this on our blog in the sidebar. So let's do that now. So we're over on the WordPress dashboard. So you want to hover over appearance and click on widget. And then you want to scroll down on the left and grab a text widget and then dump that in the sidebar. You can put it on the top or I'm going to put it in the bottom in this case, the bottom of the sidebar. You just want to right click in content here and paste that code right there then click save and that is it we're done let's go over to our blog so I'm going to hover over the blog name right click on visit site and open that in a new tab and now if you scroll down to the bottom of the sidebar right here you'll see our ad there we go here's our ad now at the moment it's completely blue that's fine whenever you add a new ad on your um, blog or website through AdSense it usually does appear plain like this to begin with and then after an hour or so you'll start seeing the actual ad so there we go we've now got ads on our blog so when people interact with these ads at the end of the month we'll be paid a lump sum into our bank account or PayPal however you set it in your AdSense account and as I mentioned before you need to earn a minimum of a hundred dollars to get paid so once your account reaches a hundred dollars you'll get paid straight into your bank account or PayPal account so we've now added our AdSense ads to our blog right right here and AdSense allow you to add up to three ads per page so we can actually add two more ads on our blog right here however if you're a complete beginner and your blog still has not much content or visits then I definitely recommend you just start off with one because you don't want to bombard all your visitors with ads everywhere before they've even had a chance to dive into your content and find value in it so when you're starting out with your blog one ad just inside by here will be fine and then once you grow out your blog and get more and more traffic then you can add an ad block here and also an ad block down the bottom and AdSense only allow you to have up to three ads that's the maximum and I'll show you in later tutorials how to add more ads but for now we're just sticking with one in the sidebar right here and what I'll do is I'll give out a free PDF guide showing you how to get the maximum earnings from your AdSense on your blogs and websites and you can get access to that when you sign up to our newsletter so head on over to websitewizard.tv and sign up to our newsletter and you can and download that free guide showing you how to get the maximum AdSense earnings from your blogs and websites and I'll leave the link to that in the video description so we've now reached the end of this tutorial showing you how to start a profitable blog I hope you enjoyed the training if you like the tutorial then let me know by liking the video and if there's something I didn't cover in a tutorial that you have a question for then just let me know by dropping a question below the video and I'll get back to you and be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on any of our future training. You can also check out some of the free stuff on our website at websitewizard.tv and you can download our free customizable logos, you can take our free courses and we've got a bunch of other free resources including a free PDF guide showing you how to get the maximum earnings from AdSense on your blog. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time.